happy Friday and welcome back to the underground broadcast, everyone. Cheers. I got a beer right here opening up here. Oh, yeah. I'm taking it old school. I got me a cigarillo rolled right now. Joe Koo and the cunt, thank you for being here. Let me play y'all's intro. Super Saiyan Joe Koo, here we go. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cheers, Joku! And here's for the cunt, our resident Australia! You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready, because the cunt is here. Cheers, the cunt! Thank you for being here so early in the morning. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, yeah, motherfuckers, I'm gonna give fucking toasted right now i love these things I, I used to smoke like three or four of these a day back in the day now i'm pretty stingy me was stingy with my weed uh but tonight i felt like i needed to celebrate with y'all um shit uh yeah 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 i you know the only one thing i don't like about these is that every time i roll them and i roll them perfect especially now that i got long nails and shit uh they bend like an arc like my dick sucks ass i want them to be straight but they, they bend i don't know why oh well you know the bitches like them bent that's all i know cheers mm -mm 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 -mm. um i'm gonna get this show started y'all i hope uh, other people show up tonight again we're broadcasting from the dud channel because we have currently been banned from streaming on the broadcast channel uh because we did something illegal there two sundays ago and we still got 80 days on our ban. After 80 days, then we'll go to broadcasting back on that channel. But in the meantime, we're broadcasting on another link. Make sure you go to our social medias to get those links and shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, that's how we're going to do it, you know. So hopefully people will find the links on our social medias. Like I post them on Twitters and on Instagrams. I don't post them on TikToks. So I'm going to make a fucking video and shit. Uh, but yeah, the links are there, so you'll find them. And I try to put them on the actual page of, you know, the broadcast channel, the channel you're already subscribed to. It should be at the top uh, on a Friday. I'll, I'll try to remember to put it on top on Friday. Link this broadcast from another, because you can link videos from another channel. I didn't even know you could do that. I just found that out. So I'll try to do that. But still, YouTube does not give you notifications for shit like that. So you actually have to go and look for it. Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully in 80 days, we can go back to normal. Anyways, we have a very, very long show tonight. Uh, a few things uh, that happened uh, on tonight's show. Uh, of course, uh, let me see what I'm doing here because I'm, I'm fucking up. Here we go. Uh, a few things that are happening on tonight's show is uh, we got the Crow trailer. Got a lot to say about that. We have a lot, a lot of DC and a lot of Marvel ads. So much shit. We're gonna review Halo, and of course, we can't finish without celebrity breakdown. So get ready for that ass. It's gonna be great. Uh, but let's get going, man. We'll start with the comments. We got a lot of comments, and we'll we'll, we'll get going. We'll get the show on the road, and by the time the show starts, uh, we'll get a good buzz going on. So here we go with the comments, y'all. Here are my social medias and Twitter. It's at Cinnaman six six five. And Instagram, it's at the underscore underground underscore broadcast. And on TikTok, it's at the underground broadcast. Uh, those are our social medias. So make sure you subscribe to that so you can get up to date with all the bullshit that we say and links and ass. Uh, basically, I mean, it's basically the show. If you watch the show on Friday or Saturday, you don't have to watch any of the videos the rest of the week, to be honest with you. Oh, well. Anyways, we don't bullshit on this channel. We tell you the truth, even if it sucks. Uh, we're going to start with our first commenter. And it's none other than uh, our first, one of our official OG woke packers, Gomer Kyle. Let me hit it for this guy. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds. 
to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Uh, Gomer says on the podcast video, broadcast video, this video gets a Trump shout out. Gomer pass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. President Trump shouted at Gomer and Joe Cool out. That was crazy. Cheers to the hashtag. Live. Let's do it in November, Trump 2024. That AI is the shit. Hashtag. Live. Ah, uh, yeah, I should do the, the for life goal. Or go. I don't know. I'll think of something. Sucking on the, sucking on the thumb, maybe? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's get going. Cheers, Gomer. Hope you show up tonight. Yeah, now I got slobber all over my finger for that. I gotta wipe it down. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. All right, here we go. Oh, the cunt. Resident Australian. Uh, he wrote, I hate when this shit jumps like that. Here you go. God damn, I missed the show. I didn't get notifications. Fucking YouTube, that dog. I'm proper, I'm proper surprised people are hating on Avatar. I thought it nailed it better in the adaptation than One Piece. Yeah, I, th I mean, you know, I had never seen One Piece, so I, I liked it. Uh, I can tell you that I hate the anime. Uh, I cannot stand watching it. Uh, especially once Chopper joins, it really, really sucks. Just some of the characters can be really annoying and loud. Annoyingly loud in One Piece, in the anime. And it turned me off a lot. Um, especially because it happens throughout the episode, like nonstop. And I'm just like, God damn it, man. Just like hanging out with someone you don't want to hang out with. And that's kind of what it was. I like the Netflix show. Uh, I do. Uh, but I had never seen the anime One Piece. I tried to see it afterwards. I didn't like it. Anyways. He said, I always thought Aang was a reference to Tibet and how China rolled in on them in Mongolia. Remember that movie? Kung Dun? They made that Disney was a pussy to release. Uh, ah, uh, uh, yeah. Woke well, packs for life. R.I.P. Akira Toriyama. One of the all-time legendary ink slingers. Yeah, R.I.P. Toriyama-san, we shall miss you uh, and your creations. Um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what... The, you're right. It was a, a kind of an allegory to that, the Chinese and the Tibetans. Like, it's crazy. Like, China was, like, fucking uh, all about, like, weird shit. Taoism and ass about the the waters and the wind. And then, <laughs> and then they kind of started the, the Buddhism... And then China started turning Christian. There's a lot, a lot of Christians. There's more Christians than anything in fucking China right now. Uh, they're turning into a Christian nation, whereas the United States is turning into a satanic nation. Or, you know what, let's just let's just come out and say it. It's always been a satanic nation. Um, but they're really turning into a Christian nation. And then they, they fucking rolled on all those Tibetans because the Tibetans were saying, like, nah, you're God. Everyone is God. You all are the same. And they got pissed. What is this nonsense about peace and love? Fuck you. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty fucked up, though, because, like, all those people are, like, blood related, man. And then, like, just because of the fucking things they believe in, they hate on each other. That's fucked up. That's the main reason why us humans are excluded from the galactic empire that exists is because they know that like we can't even get along as a species imagine when we meet other species like you know what i'm saying like they are probably more united in their own because oh we're like fucking pleadians and we're draconians and we're this and that whereas over here we're all like oh yeah i'm mexican i'm black i'm american i'm jewish and shit and it's like no you idiots you're all just human do you understand uh but no they don't they don't that's the problem uh, I feel like we're probably like this, like a zoo, you know, like they all come here or maybe they don't come here. Maybe they're just watching us with their satellites and shit, you know, their technology and they just watch us like the South Park episode, like a TV show. And that's the way it is. We're too destructive to be up there with where the real intelligent life. We can't, you think little Wayne or, or fucking Cardi B or anybody like that can go and have an intelligent conversation with an alien life? Fuck no. 
Maybe their pet dog or something, their pet spider, alien fucking squid that they have. Maybe they can fucking come hang out with us, but we can't talk. To, we, we can't hang out with aliens. Nuh-uh. It'd be like us talking to a fucking, a, I don't know, a caveman or something. Just you know, a monkey flinging shit. That's how they look at us. That's probably what we are. Anyways, cheers, a cunt. I uh, went out of there. I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm trying to get high now, y'all. Anyways, he said another comment on the, on the Alec Baldwin short video that I made. He says, the only thing Alec Baldwin is guilty of is being a douche. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And fucking a lot of Hollywood stars. This son of a bitch. Him and Steven. I think Steven probably fucked more finer bitches than this dumbass. Uh, they both did. I'm gonna lie, man. This guy was getting some poo tang back in the day before he got all thick and shit. I ain't gonna lie. The Baldwins and Billy Baldwin. They said that fucking Sharon Stone. Did you hear that shit? I'm not gonna cover it tonight, but they said that Sharon Stone, the producer, fucking. <laughs> the producer said, hey, this guy sucks at acting. Why don't you sleep with him so that way he, you guys can have better chemistry? And she's all like, what? Like, it's not my fault he can't act. I gotta sleep with him so that <laughs> so that he becomes a better actor. And she did anyways, because it was her job back then. Uh, but that's what she's saying. And she said, fucking Billy Baldwin. <laughs> with a name like that, you know he sucked at acting. <laughs> Cheers! Mm. And Gomer Kyle is here. It's here for this asshole. Cheers, Gomer. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. We're glad you made it. Hope everything's all right, man. Uh, we got some rain. I don't know how you're doing. You probably got snow or something. No, you got, I think you're getting storms pretty soon. I think they're rolling out of my area and heading towards your way. You better be careful. Uh, the weather got crazy the last day and a half. Suddenly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the end of times, fellas. The end of times. Y'all better be get right with yourselves. With yourselves. Remember that. All right. Cheers, cunt. Cheers, Gomer. Let me keep on with the comments. Ah, oh, this fucking Satanist. Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this fucking guy. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. I keep hitting uh the numbers here while I'm highlighted on this. I'm sorry, y'all. There. Uh, Rocco says, Yo, I logged on and tried to put my laptop to record, but your feed never came on. Oh, last Friday. Now I know you got banned. That sucks. It's a dud channel. You gotta look for the links in the social media as I told you fuckers. Hey son, my roommate showed me that Parasite Maxim anime last year. It's badass. Dude. Remember I told you guys that I fucking went crazy for that trailer and I knew nothing about it. I thought I was gonna go and with my Jack Sparrow Bay and download it. And I did. Uh, it's called, yeah, it is called Parasite Maxim. You really did watch it. Um, I'm on episode... 13 there's only 24 episodes but i'm on episode 13 is badass bro it's, it's entirely not what i thought it was gonna be i don't even know i don't even think the show is gonna be like that the show looks different in that uh but it's badass uh i i recommend it y'all the, the there's a kid the way it starts is that this kid you know these spores fall from space or whatever and a little worm comes out of it and they go into the to, into your brain through your ear hole and once they control you, they change your DNA and it becomes, you're no longer you. It's it's the alien. And the alien lives in your brain. And then when, when it comes out to feed, because it's got to feed on humans, uh, your the head opens up like a mouth. And, and they all kind of look similar, but different in, in each of them. It's fucking nuts. Uh, but this kid is falls asleep with his, with his headphones, with his beats on or whatever. And the little parasite can't get in the, the fucking, <laughs> the ear. So he fucking crawls up the kid's nose. If any bug, I mean, I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It's happened to me. But anything tries to crawl up your nose, you feel it. it I mean, and you wake up. And you're like, what the fuck? It happened to me once a very, very long time ago. It was a spider. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> I should have swallowed that thing. Fuck being piece of shit. Let you let my stomach acids dissolve you. Just fucking trying to crawl in my fucking nose. Anyways. 
Yeah, so the kid fucking wakes up and snorts it out. And and then the thing, the thing, because you hear its thoughts, the thing is all like, I only have a few more seconds. I have to freaking latch on to something or I'm going to die because it came out of the spore, the little worm. So the worm darts at the guy and he goes like that with his hand and it goes right there in his skin and it starts crawling, make, trying to make its way to his head. This fucking guy grabs a wire or his headphones and he ties it around his fucking arm where and then the thing can't pass and he's all like ah like tying it super hard so then all of a sudden the thing you don't he doesn't see it anymore but what ends up happening is because because he didn't let it pass on to the brain it only stayed there and the thing needed to fuse was i guess it only has a certain amount of time once it leaves the little spore to fuse so it only fuses with his arm so He's now like a half hat, like his arm, you know, is a half hat. It's crazy, bro. He's almost like a superhero, half alien superhero. And he's all the killing all these other aliens. And then the thing talks to him in his head. Like he can hear its thoughts. It's so fucking badass, that anime. Man. I'm not done watching it. Um, It's depressing, too. It's fucking fucked up and depressing. I mean, shit, man. Uh, the, th the things that happens. Uh... Uh, Gomer, I'm with you. The time change has been killing me, too. I'm still not used to it. Uh, I'm all fucked up. Anyways, Rocco says, uh, keep it real, my G. Cheers, Gomer. Cheers, Trumps. Cheers, Indy. Cheers, Joe Cool. Cheers, Joe Cool. And the rest of the woke pack. Hashtag. Live. Ah, uh, yeah. Cheers, Rocco. You son of a bitch. You shouted everyone out, motherfucker. All right, let's see who else. Oh, Eddie Molina Vilches. He's <laughs> fucking Mexican, Italian son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, Eddie says on the on the parasite. He says YouTube is the parasite. Tell, oh, parasite. Oh, YouTube is the parasite. Oh. Yeah, yeah, YouTube is a... YouTube, ever since Google took it over, I guess you could say it's a fucking parasite. He also says, cheers, my brown ski. Cheers, bitches. Thank you for being and commenting. Oh, this guy commented a lot. This new guy. This new guy named Julian Del Castell. 509. On the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4 video. Who, he says, who wants Spider-Man 4, Tobey Maguire, May 3rd, 2024? Because I do. Well, yeah, of course we do, but that's not going to happen because that's like, what, like three months away? They don't, they, they didn't film anything. That'd be badass. I'm going to lie. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't, and then he went on and he says, who also wants the amazing Spider-Man 3 with under Garfield to actually happen and to be released on June 7th, 2024? That would be amazing. He says, because I would love that as well. Who's with me? I'm with you. Except it's unrealistic because that's like uh, five months away and they can't film a movie. They, they haven't filmed nothing. We know it's not happening. And then he says, uh, oh, and one more thing. Who thinks Spider-Man Beyond, Beyond the Spider-Verse should be released this December instead of 2025? Because I wouldn't want to have to wait until next year for the movie to be released. In my opinion, the movie should happen this year. Who's with me? I'm with you too. Except Sony has fired a hundred, one hundred of their fucking animators right after the end of the last movie to cut costs. And now they have to delay it because they don't have enough animators. You know, they have animators, but not animators that like to work eight to ten hours a day. You have anima animators that like to work four days a week for five hours, and they need to get at least one mental health day a month. Okay? When you have that kind of diversity in the workplace, let's be honest, work never gets done. So that's why we're still waiting on these Spider-Man movies. Cheers! Julian Del Castell. Arthur Charlie, another guy, new guy. 
on the Nick Swartzen videos, uh, uh, the one the one where he sucks ass at a stand up. What the fuck did I just click on? Dot dot dot. The voice, the attitude. Dot dot dot. The look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's Andrew Schwartzen, or whatever the fuck this guy's name is. That's what you clicked on. I'm disappointed, too, because I don't ever thought he was funny. Anyways. Cheers, Arthur Charlie. Thank you for commenting. Watching the video. All right, all right. Let's see who's next. Oh, it's none other than Houston, Texas, very own. The one... The only Jose Treviño. Let me hit it for this asshole. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Yeah. Me tienes envidia, puto. Oh, yeah, Joe Cool, you're the shit, motherfucker. He says, uh, what up, gay? I mean, guy. Great show as usual, son. Keep keeping G like a player should. You know we do, motherfucker. I can't believe your channel got struck for AEW. Yeah, yeah. It was actually fight. Was it fightful? I think it was fightful that, uh, no, I don't even know if it was fightful. It wasn't AEW directly that gave us a strike. It was the the, per, the people that were selling the pay-per-view. Damn it, son. You did it to watch Darby and those Daisy dudes, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, Darby's there. Come on, man. You want a big fucking muscly guy, you son of a bitch. You're not Darby Allen. Motherfucker. You know who's up? What, what, you know what? Billy Gunn is, what, 52 years old, and that motherfucker has a better body than fucking all of the roster there. God damn it. There's some really good wrestlers out there, but you would see them in the streets. You would never know they were wrestlers because they look like your average Joes and shit. Eddie Kingston being at the top of it. Shit. If Eddie Kingston could be a wrestler, Joe Cool, you could be a wrestler, and so could you, so per se, Joe Cool. Shit. If Darby Allen could be a wrestler, so could I. I'm, I'm pretty sure I would die right away with one of the stunts that Darby Allen. I don't know how the fuck he does it, bros. You know? I'm, you know, I've seen some of those Mexican wrestlers that go up there and fight, and I go online and see how, and they're, they're about my height, but they're still bigger than me. They might be my height, but they're bigger than me, and I'm like, man, one slam, one body slam on my back on that mat, it would take all my air out, and I'd be like, <sighs> <laughs> I promise you, I would not be able to take one body slam. I gave it props to all of them motherfuckers. But when it comes down to bodies, Billy Guide, motherfucker. 52 years old, that son of a bitch. No, I, don't, I think it's older than that. 52, I think it's more than that, man. I think that guy's close to his 60s, but you know. Oh, I give him all credit, man. I'll tell you like that. Not on their bodies. Some motherfuckers need to hit the gym. Adam Cole, Bay Bay. Son of a bitch. You're a damn good wrestler and you're a pretty boy, but you need to get some fucking tone in your fucking body. Anyways, I'm getting off the subject here. Yeah, yeah. Um, damn it, son. He says, anyways, Mr. President Trump, it sounded awesome. Oh, the AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Me, Goms, and his political ways. Oh, oh Goms. Oh, and the... Oh, uh, you, you, he was about to diss me. He says, the WWO. Damn it, son. Make a drop of that. I got you, motherfucker. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's as best as I could do because the new order is too fast. And uh, they don't have a sample that's just clean unless I do it myself. I'll try it. But that's, I got you. I got you. AKA the woke pack, he says. I'll stand back and stand by. Shout out to the woke pack. Hashtag. Live. He says, hashtag. Yeah, woke pack world order. That's how we do in this channel. Uh, that's a, that could be a shirt, man. Fuck a, you know. So we, we give a shirt away at the end of the year. It'll be the WWO 
the woke pack world order mm, that'll be so badass yeah yeah cheers joe cool trevino thank you for commenting Oh, he commented again the Spider-Man 4 video. He says, I agree with you, son. Sony constantly continues to ruin franchises and forcing their stupid, lame villain universe. Sony, let go of your ego and just make Spider-Man 4 in my voice. You idiots. I agree. They're sitting on a gold mine. Andrew Garfield ain't doing shit right now. He ain't doing shit. And the way everything works, everything's CGI and stunt doubles. You don't need none of these motherfuckers to work out or nothing. You can CGI their bellies and shit off nowadays, for fuck's sakes. Um, they're ready. They're ready. And Kirsten Dunst says, "I hope they bring me. They asked me to come back for one of these movies. I would do it in a second." And asked her why, and she goes, "Because they pay a lot of money, and I have kids to support. I'll take anything. I'll be Mary Jane again." She says. Oh, Jose Trevino's here. I gotta give him his intro because he's the most epic intro of all. Here we go. Repites tu nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Yeah. Envidia, puto. Ah, cheers! This is fucking Joe Cool. I love your fucking intro, bro. I could listen to that all day. Mm. Cheers. Make a Tobey Maguire movie featuring Andrew Garfield. He brings in his Spider-Man brother from the multiverse to help him on an adventure. In fact, you can make Spider-Man 4 and the Amazing Spider-Man 3 in the same movie. If you're smart, you fucking dumbasses. You start, like, the movie starts one with one, and then it switches to the other one, and then, boom, they both get brought into the, to, to the fucking adventure through the multiverse. They gotta the, fucking help themselves, help each other. Duh! Or, this is even, it's already there. When they got transported back from Doctor Strange, you know, they were, they were both holding on to each other. They get transported into Toby's universe, and Andrew's all like, well, now what? There you go. There's your Spider-Man 4 featuring Andrew Garfield. They've been stuck there since the fucking last movie. Continuation. You idiots. A billion dollar franchise is sitting on your hand and you're wasting your money making Craven the Hunter, Venom 3s, and your goddamn stupid ass Madam Webs. All movies that should include Spider-Man in it and you don't even have it in. Fuck you, Sony. You idiots. Cheers, Joe Cool. Got me all riled up now. See what you do, fucking guy. Oh, he he, Joe Cool. Ugh, excuse me. On the Nick Swartzen video, he says Nick Swallow's son is a lazy mess. But to put Norm Macdonald in his league, no sir. Norm Macdonald is a great comedian and a troll, in my humble opinion. I don't think he liked Hollywood very much. And it showed especially towards the end of his life. Dirty Work, underrated classic. Dirty Work is one of my all-time favorite fucking movies. I ain't gonna lie. I think it's hilarious. And it's amazing that Dirty Work uh, came out of fucking... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bob, Bob, Bob Saget. Bob Saget. And uh, Bob Saget paid for most of the fucking movie. And, uh, and fucking lost money making it. Uh, so it's amazing, you know. I love, I love fucking dirty work. It's, it's fucking amazing. And R, what was his name? Arnie, the guy with the fucked up nose from doing too much coke. He fucked up his nose. I forget what his name is. I think it's Arnie or something. The guy looks like a Belushi. That guy. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I love dirty work. Um, he's not. No, you're right. He's look. Norm Macdonald was. It's just the the thing with Norm Macdonald, and it's just that he just he didn't like Hollywood. You know, he just. Just, you know, just wanted to be there. You know, not not like be there, but, you know, oh, I'll, you want me to be on the show? Okay, I'll be on the show, whatever. Like, you know, it just so happens that he kind of blew up a little bit, got money, but he just didn't care enough to fucking become anything more. You know, like all these other guys, like Sandler and all these guys. This guy just stayed at home and shit. You're right about that. He is not at the same level as Nick Swartz and... I just meant to say that he's one of Sandler's friends that just doesn't try because Norm Norm was talented unlike fucking Schwartzen and, and those other fucking idiots from, from uh Norm's movies, those guys. 
uh, not from Sandler's movies that come out in all his fucking movies, and one of them's an idiot, you know, being arrested and shit. He's all fat. The one that used to be all fucking big and ripped. He's all fat and a crackhead now or some shit. Fucking idiot. Just ruined his life. A disappointing, disappointing. Uh, I like Adam Sandler. Go watch his new movie, The Spaceman. He's a, it's a good fucking movie. R.I.P. Norm McDonald, we miss you. Cheers. R.D. Lang. Chris Farley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Farley was great. Chris Farley was great. It's sad when you see those documentaries, bro. Um, Because you start fucking realizing that the guy didn't think he was funny and he thought people were only laughing because he was fat. At least, you know, from all these interviews from, from other people and, you know, like he would do something, everybody be laughing and, you know, cut. And he'd be asking everybody, was that funny? Don't lie to me, please. Was that really funny? Don't, like, for real. And everybody's like, yeah, it was great. And he, like, he would keep on asking different people because he didn't believe them. They're like, they're only laughing at me because I'm fat. And that kind of sucks, bro, that he kind of felt like that. Uh, well. The bar fight is awesome. <laughs> E7. <laughs> if you like piña colada. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot uh yeah anyways let me keep going man there's a lot of comments y'all we have a long fucking show it's already eight um there's a guy a new guy 911 y9 i guess he says insanity on video dude for real get help and he puts a little emoji uh i don't know you're talking about me or you're talking about a fucking uh, Nick Swartzen, which I hope you're talking about Nick Swartzen, but you're talking about me. Let me just remind you that in this day and age, this is actually normal. All right. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, insanity. This is normal. If you don't look like this, you're the crazy one. You dumbass. Have you not watched the televisions? Anyways, we're moving on. Cheers. Thank you for commenting and watching the video. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's not other than this racist son of a bitch. Uh, his name was canceled for life. <laughs> Let me hit it for this asshole. What do you call 100 black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three things that a black man can't get? A black guy, a fat lip, and a job. I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. All right. Uh, this guy says, on the Brian Peck ruined Drake Bell. This is pretty fucked up. It is being said it was Drake Bell who had put charges on Peck that sent him to jail back then. Uh, it Now it's coming to light. Amanda Bynes, Orlando Brown, Raven Simone, Alexa Nicholas. All these kids deserve better childhoods. Sadly, their parents sold them out for money. Cheers to the man. Hashtag. Uh, dude, you fucking couldn't. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's uh, fucked up. And it, yeah, that's right. I, like I, everybody known that fucking uh, jo uh, uh, fucking Brian Peck went to jail for like a year and a half or some shit for kind of kid abuse or sexual assault or some ass. Uh, but no one knew who it was. They just and he got fired and was gone. You know, I mean, he's still around or whatever. But I mean, he was gone from the scene and shit from the little kids scene and shit. He was no longer allowed. And, um, so now Drake Bell's coming out and said, I was the one, you know, because I, I woke up. He was saying, he's saying that because he was like the acting coach and that a lot of times the parents would just get there and I'll oh, go with Brian and the parents would leave and he would stay there all the time. And then, oh, we're going to rehearse lines and they go to his house and sleep over. And sometimes he'd be over with Brian for a week, never even go home and shit says that one day he woke up and this guy was he didn't he didn't get into specifics 
but I'll let your imagination run wild. He said, this guy was sexually assaulted me. I didn't know what to do. And it happened a few more times. And I finally went and told somebody. And then and they arrested the son of a bitch. Uh, you know, nothing ever happened to that fucking the Dan Schneider. And he fucked up uh, Alexa Nicolas and fucking Amanda Bynes. And this guy, Brian Peck, man. This guy was really close to Leo DiCaprio when he was doing sitcoms when he was young, man. This guy is a fucking... This guy's been molesting, fingering little kids' assholes for a long time. This is fucked up, man. Uh, and and this happened throughout the 90s, too, man. This is up into the 2000s because all these kids, you know, like Amanda Bynes and Alexa Nicolas and all that shit. You know, the only reason this kind of stuff didn't happen to Molly Cyrus is because her dad was on the set and a character on the goddamn show the whole time. So there was no molestations of that little girl. She's the one who was molesting other motherfuckers because she was horny. But that different. Um, yeah, it just fucked up, man, that a, a network primarily that does nothing but kids programming hires a bunch of fucking pervs and shit, and then to be in charge of all these kids. Uh, does Nickelodeon still exist? I mean, does it? I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have cable. I, everything's on the internet that I, that I watch. Uh, if Nickelodeon exists, that's pretty fucked up right now. Uh, but yeah. It's fucked up, Drake Bell. I don't know. This is another excuse for him to come out and say, you know, like shit. This is why. This is why. Why. Uh. Why I. I sent dick pics to a fourteen-year-old because this man fucked me up. I don't know. It was a little girl, son of a bitch. It's kind of fucked up. Ah, uh, but I don't know, man. How I. 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 I thank God I was not sexually molested by uh an elder when I was little. Uh. So yeah, I'm not that screwed up. I'm the normal one here in this situation. So just remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. All right, let's move on. Oh, uh, Cancel for Life also says, I don't find Schwartzen's style of comedy funny. And to be honest, what he was doing on stage here was pretty embarrassing, even for him. It's embarrassing for anybody to go up there and be like, hang on, hang on. I got something. Hang on, hang on. You're gonna love this. Okay, hang on. Um, um, no, wait, hang on. You're gonna love this. And he was doing that for like, because I saw the whole video. He did that for like five minutes and more. I mean, I was just like, is he gonna do something? It's fucking embarrassing. You go up there, like, you don't even have a monologue or nothing ready. You're supposed to be a comedian, a professional, a stand up. You go up there with nothing. Fucking idiot. Anyways, yeah, cheers, uh, cancel for life. Pissing me off thinking about that son of a bitch. I really don't like Nick Schwartz, and I'm sorry. Oh, it's our resident Canuck in the Phantom. Let me hit it for this guy. He goes, ah, yeah, on the Spider-Man 4 video. I guess someday I'll finally watch the more recent Spider-Man movies where Tobey Maguire came back. You'll love it. It's probably the only good ones. I like the new Spider-Man movies. I think they're all good, but some people still prefer the old school ones, which is fine. But this third one, there isn't a single person that will say that it, it sucks. It's just perfect because you see all of them together. It's great. It's great. I also don't hate Spider-Man 3 as much as the rest of the world, but man, I hate superhero outfits. Dude looking pretty old. My favorite Maguire flick is probably Pleasantville. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the, the sister's a slut. She starts fucking these people, and every time she fucks somebody, they turn to color. <laughs> it's crazy because they get trapped in the TV or some shit like that. This is a long time ago I saw it. Anyways. Now we really need Paul Giamatti to play a rhino again. And this time the real rhino. But we're gonna get the rhino in the Craven the Hunter movie where he's not really a hunter. He's a vegan conservative and shit. Preserve 
animal preserves or whatever. Fuck you. I saw the Amazing Spider-Man 2 at the drive-in. Oh, yeah, you yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what you do at the drive-in? Masturbate. Emma Stone sucks ass, but Rhino was amazing, and I don't believe the negativity. Cheers, son. It's, um, what I didn't like from Amazing Spider-Man 2, honestly, was the Green Goblin. Because already you had the Rhino and you had Electro, and that should have been enough. You could have waited for the Green Goblin till the third movie. Because we had already seen the Green Goblin in the last franchise. So it's just like, you're, now you're just forcing ass. And that's the reason why Spider-Man 3 sucked ass. But it's because they inserted Venom. They already had Sandman. And they already had the new Green Goblin. Because the story was continuing. And then they added Venom. Which was cool. But you can't... Venom is his own movie by himself. You don't need everything else in it. Venom was actually forced in there by Sony. Raimi, Raimi was pissed. Uh, because Venom was becoming super popular in the comic books. They were selling tons of comics and toys. And they said, we need to put this character in the fucking movie. Uh, and they fucked up. Because they because the movie was not written to have Venom in it. They forced him to write him in between all the shit you already wrote. And that's already going to be a bad movie regardless of how you feed it. Just because of that situation. But anyways... Uh, yeah. I don't know. We need more Spider-Man movies, and we need less of fucking whatever the hell Madam Web and all these side asses they're coming up with. That's where they're fucking up. We need Spider-Man movies. We need, that's all we need. We don't need anything else. If you're gonna make a Rhino, put him in a Spider-Man movie. You mean Craven the Hunter, put him in a spider Madam Web, put her in a Spider-Man movie with Spider-Man in them. It's not going to make no money if you don't have Spider-Man in them, you idiots. God damn it. They're making me angry just thinking about all the nonsense, man. We haven't even started the show, you guys. Fuck. Uh, Jordan. On the Brian Peck ruined Drake Bell. Who is Brian Peck and who is Drake Bell? Brian Peck is a fucking pervert who's been molesting children since who knows when. And Drake Bell is a fucking guy uh, who's hot uh, back in the day when he was a teen, uh, a pre-adolescent star in the Nickelodeon show. He played the guitar and shit. And all the little girls, you know, they were horny, but they didn't know what what they were feeling yet. All right, but that's that's what it was. Cheers, Jordan. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Super Saiyan Joku and The Last Airbender. My hopes for the season two. Yes, yes, everything you said, son of man, I agree with, and I will help get the rock campaign going with you. Thanks for letting us know this news of more to come. I'm so excited about it. Cheers, mother flowers. Cheers, Joko. You motherfucker making me drinks. He also said on the Drake uh, Bell short video, Drake just needs to stop being soft if he wants to be a dick and get hard man up and tell the details. Meow. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Look, he said it happened several times. So either this guy was fingering him in his ass or was sucking his dick. What else could it have been? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. It's fucked up, bro. You do that to a kid. Uh, I'm telling you, this guy and Leonardo DiCaprio have probably been intimate. I'm telling you, man, Leonardo DiCaprio was like fucking 14, 15 years old hanging out with Bram Peck on sets of these TV shows and shit. And there's a video, and Leo's super young. You can look it on the internet. I don't know what it's called, but look it up on YouTube. And Bram Peck is saying, uh, this is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Leo's young, probably like 14, 13. And he comes up to him, and, he's, and, and he goes like, hey, what's up? And then he's like, this kid right here, this is the hottest, youngest uh, teen sensation. Look at him. So sexy. And, and Leo's all like laughing. Ah, yeah, whatever. And shit. And, and I'm all like, now you'll see that video after learning this kind of shit. And you're all like, that's fucked up, bros. That's really fucked up. And Leo's a big star. Imagine what he did for his fame and fortune. I mean, he took forever to get an Oscar. Forever, even though he was good, he was good from the very beginning. What's eating Gilbert Grape 
fucking the basketball diaries. He was good from the very beginning, but he didn't get the Oscars. You wanna know why? It's because they really, really fucked him. For years and years and years. Until he got it in the Revenant. One of the stupidest movies to get an Oscar for. He hardly had any fucking lines. For fuck's sakes. Dumb as fuck. Anyways, cheers, Joku. Uh, I think this might be the last one. Let me make sure. Yes. Joe Super Saiyan Joku is also the last comment. And he says, Anything with Jackie Chan... Oh, yeah, on the Jackie Chan new Karate Kid movie. Anything with Jackie Chan is dope. My favorite cousin... Cheers, my flowers. Um... I remember the first Jackie Chan movie that I went to go see in theaters because it's the only one that I that had been premiering in theaters. It was called Jackie Chan's First Strike. It was fucking sick, bro. There was so much cool shit that, like, I like you could tell this stuff was real. Because when you see a Hollywood movie, you see the cuts and the editings, but you don't really notice that. The cuts and the edits. You don't notice it until you see a Jackie Chan movie. And there's no cuts. You're seeing fucking the movement of everything. And you're all like, this is real. Uh, it's crazy. And then what was cool about that movie is because I had never seen a Jackie Chan movie. Is at the end of it, they show all the bloopers. But they're not bloopers. They're basically close calls of him almost dying. Doing these fucking stunts. I'm all like, fuck. It's insane, bro. There was one where I remember, and this is a long time ago I saw this. He jumped through the fucking ladder, like through the one of the, the holes in the ladder, like to, to slide because he was being chased and he was going to slide into the middle and then use the ladder. Well, he did that, but he didn't fall straight through it. He, he kind of got stuck and bent and the ladder bent and clamped on him. Everyone. Oh shit, I just knocked this shit down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'll fuck with it in a while. Everyone fucking just... I, this light just fell. But everyone just... As soon as the ladder just clamped on him, everyone just ran up. Like, to, oh my god. Like, all these like fucking Asian people like trying to fucking... Un like, make sure he doesn't fucking get sliced in half and shit. Um, that was my first Jackie Chan movie was Jackie Chan First Strike. Uh, Rumble in the Bronx, I've seen that one. There's so many that are good, man. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to lie. To me, still the best are the Rush Hour. Because when you add Chris Tucker's comedic element to it, it's just perfect. It was just so fun and, and good. Uh, I liked it a lot, the Rush Hours. I, hope, I still pray there's talks, but I still pray they make a new one. Who knows what's going to happen with that. Um, anyways, uh, that's it for the comments. I do want to say I appreciate each and every one of you, as always. Number one, for being here. And number two, especially because this isn't even the real channel. This is a dud channel. So I'm, I'm happy you guys found the link. I sent it to a few of you. Thank God you saw it. Um, but yeah, I mean, people don't even watch us. And, so, and somehow we, we got a few of you watching us. So that's good. Uh, you found the link. So I thank you for being here. And thank you for commenting because, you know, we it would be a really short show if I didn't have the comments. So I appreciate you guys for that. Although I'm telling you, we have a long show ahead of us. Ahead of me. Fuckers. Anyways, cheers to y'all. All right, just going to grab a beer here. Cheers once more. Let's get this show on the road, and we're going to start, of course, with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And uh, this past Sunday, the Oscars happened. Ah uh, yeah. Don't worry. Will Smith is still banned. Nobody got slapped. Nothing controversial happened. Thank God. But uh, as you see, Oppenheimer pretty much took over. Rob RDJ, best supporting. 
Killen Murphy, Best Actor, and Best Director, Christopher Nolan, who has officially scored a $100 million paycheck for this fucking movie. That is literally 10% of the earnings. Almost 10% of the earnings for this fucking movie. That a, a director got. That's fucking insane. Directors don't even, most of the times, get fractions. The actors get paid more than directors most of the times. For fuck's sakes. Wow. Warner really, really wants to keep Nolan strictly working for them no one else and i would too uh i would too this guy's uh this guy's up there man this guy's like a, a stanley kubrick uh status he's gonna get there i'm telling you bro and this guy who's made dune uh he's he's on his way to do that too man there's just few fucking people that that have the vision to make something not only be like, there's hidden misses they can make something look good, but also be like amazing. Oppenheimer was good. It's got some flaws. I have some. They won best editing, which I am totally against because that's the only problem and issue I had with Oppenheimer was the editing. I, I wasn't happy about it at all. It jumped around too much and it had me confused. Uh, that was my own personal opinion. That was my issue with, with that fucking movie. Um, but yeah, it was still a great movie. I think Killers of the Flower Moon could have gotten it if it wasn't that it was too damn long. Uh, but yeah, I think they, they all deserve this for sure. I'll tell you like that. But anyways, another thing that did come out out of the Oscars is that none other than Billie Eilish and her brother Finnis Got Oscars for the second time. I think they, I don't know for what other shit they got it. I forget what other song they did on the movie and shit. But she got it for this Barbie ass. And she has now become the first youngest person to ever have two Oscars. Without ever acting, by the way. Well, I guess she kind of acts when she performs. You know? She's not like... Her voice, when she talks, kind of like me. She says a lot of shit and ass. And you're all like, what? Why does she talk like that? She says, I'm fucking tripping balls and shit. You know, she's one of these little girls. <laughs> one of these little country girls talks ass all the time out of her mouth. That's what she's like. And that's badass. So, yeah. I guess she deserves an Oscar for at least, you know, sounding good. Yeah, she sings good, you know. You know, they turned that shit up and put reverb on her voice because no way in hell she'd be loud enough like some of these other singers. But that besides the point, she got an Oscar. Congratulations to all the winners and the fucking supporters of the motherfucking ass. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but something that fucking surprised everyone and that me personally, I'm pretty excited and was proud of because I didn't expect this either. But Godzilla minus one... One best visual effects. They gave best visuals. VFX to Godzilla minus one. I think they do deserve it. Because this is a movie that made a hundred million dollars, I believe, on a fucking ten million, probably less, ten million dollar budget. And the fact that the VFX looked as good as they did for a movie. Marvel shits out fucking $250 million movies. Plus, with reshoots, probably more. And their visual effects look like ass. This movie was good. I think they won it and shit. But the big controversy that came out of all of this was when the motherfucking acceptance speech happened. And I have a little video for y'all. We're discuss it right now. Let me give you some snippets of uh, director Takashi Yamazaki 
receiving the award for best visual effects for Godzilla Minus One. Here we go. Uh, my career began 40 years ago after the shock of seeing Star Wars and close encounters of some kind. Uh, to someone uh, so far from Hollywood, even. Uh, uh, finally, uh, on, finally on the, I want to tell our pre uh, producer, Shuji Abe, who, uh, who we lost too soon. Uh, we did it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who's? Bright idea was it to let this man go up there and publicly embarrass him, embarrass himself on live television. American live television, by the way. Fuck you. He, he didn't even seem prepared. Like, he's like, we, we won? Shit, now I gotta read this ass that I didn't even study? Fuck. It's like me going and accepting an award in German. Oh, the best new Mexican YouTube video. Over there in Germany, they invite me and I go over there and I gotta read it in German and shit. I'm gonna be like, fuck you, you get me in one of these hot German translators. I'm gonna say something she better say it in German in the microphone and shit. No way in hell I'm gonna go up there looking like an asshole. That's just me. I just say this was very fucking irresponsible of these people to do this to this man. It was like, you give him an award and you still somehow find a way to embarrass him. Fuck you. That's all I'm gonna say. Congratulations to fucking Godzilla Minus One. It's a good fucking movie. And all I'm gonna say is that I, I still I still am waiting. I still am waiting for the fucking uh the digital release. This movie was released in October. It's already March, and I can't find a good a decent copy online. What the fuck? When the fuck are the Japanese gonna release this goddamn movie? A digital. I need to pirate it on the internet now. That's all I'm saying. Got the Oscar already. Release it to the public and dub it in English, please. Get Willem Dafoe and Morgan Freeman. Michelle Williams, she did really good in the Britney Spears book reading. It was really good. Anyways, cheers. Get to the minus one. All winners. All right. Let's move on because they premiered at one of these Hindi fucking festivals you know where you go and you fucking south by south or whatever the fuck you see all these fucking stupid ass movies that are not gonna be in theaters but they're gonna be in theaters if they're good enough that people think oh they should be in theaters and then they put it in theaters and shit all right well people saw what they're calling one of the sexiest horniest uh movies that's ever been shown and they're calling it love live and bleeding. Yeah. And it stars this little girl uh uh that came out in the Ant Man three and shit. She's all buff now. And the that chick who used to be in the Twilight movies who turned into a lesbian little non binary boy or whatever the fuck she identifies as. Kirsten something wig or I don't remember her name. She's one of these Kirstens, I think. Anyways, they're saying this is the sexiest lesbian fucking Crazy, like, you don't even know if, if you should be horny or not kind of movie. It's fucking nuts, they're saying. It's erotic. And, and masculine, but feminine at the same time. And also confusing, because they might be lesbians. Uh, So I don't know. I don't know. I'll get you in a, bit, a little bit, Joe Cool. But I want to show you fucking... Some incidents that's been happening already in the theaters when they've been showing this movie, premiering it to people. Here we go. You guys are not ready for this. In Colorado, they arrested this guy for fucking passing out with his dick out, holding on to it because apparently. He'd been fucking masturbating while watching this movie. <laughs> uh, this fucking guy was so horny during the showing of this movie. No, you know what? No, he wasn't. No, it wasn't the movie's fault. This guy, if you notice, 
He took an uh, what is that? A jacket or an extra pair of pants? It looks like a extra because it looks like a belt. It looks like an extra pair of pants to put it over, over his while he had his dick out to masturbate. So this guy actually went to this movie with the intention of doing this. And now what's crazier, you guys? I'm gonna zoom in to the content that he has there on the left. This guy, he's got two bottles of Fireball, my Ball Reds, a fucking vaporizer, probably full of weed or dabs, something that doesn't smell, probably dabs. And what looks like, is that a line of cocaine? Like he was doing lines or something? What is that black shit right there, bros? <laughs> this is nuts, bro. This guy was really fucking, he went there to with the intentions of having a good time. That's all I'm gonna say, man. This is nuts, y'all. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, uh, Paul Herman, or what's his name? Uh, fucking, uh, Huey Herman, um, Paul Rubin. You know, I don't think he was taking it that far. This guy's all like, let me get high and fucking lit and drunk while I masturbate in a fucking theater, bros. <laughs> you son of a bitch, you can't do that at home, or what? Do you not have your own room, your privacy? <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? And you pass out with your dick out with your hand on it? <laughs> how about you guys? I wonder how many years he's gonna get in fucking <laughs> in jail for this ass. What an idiot. What an idiot. You know what? This guy should be in jail. This kind of sick son of a bitch who doesn't have the common sense or decency to do this in the privacy of your own home. Fucking goes to a public place to do this and shit. This is fucked up. Oh my god. Look, all I'm gonna say is this, guys. This movie is probably gonna be really good. And I encourage everybody to pro wait till it comes out on digital to watch it at home so that this kind of shit doesn't happen to you. <laughs> Cheers! You know, there is something very sexy about this movie. I don't know. That chick with muscles, she's not totally built like a fucking, like a, like a, like a, like a bodybuilder. You know, she's getting there. Her arms are crazy, bro. She could probably beat the crap out of me. Oh, this is so hot, man. Because <laughs> the other chick looks like a guy. <laughs> oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> I, I actually want to watch this movie. I'm not even lying. Like, when it comes out on digital, I'm going to review it, like, there was that salt burn movie, but I did not want to watch that. I downloaded it. I have not watched it, and I have no intentions of watching it. This looks cool. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch this. I'll just put it like that. Uh, so cheers to these fucking androgynous non-binaries. You know, that cause they might actually have a, a hit on their hands right here for the first time. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gomer, I'm with you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, um, since we are talking about ass, uh, one of these fucking award shows, uh, Ice Spice showed up naked, y'all. <laughs> I hope I don't get banned for this. <laughs> Oh, this little girl, and I think she's a little girl, um, I don't know how old she is, maybe I shouldn't be showing this, oh my god. Anyways, I don't know, people are posting this on the internet, so I guess this is, uh, uh, acceptable nowadays? To go out nude in public? Um, it's a big ass on this little girl. <laughs> She's some sort of rapper, Gomer. She raps. Everyone, all these, all these kids rap every nowadays. Everybody's a rapper. Uh, she's a rapper with a big ass and pierced nipples. Apparently, <laughs> this half Asian, half Caucasian, one sixteenth black little girl. Uh, she's probably Jewish. Probably like eighty-five percent Jewish. I bet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, that's enough of that before we get banned. <laughs> but since we are talking about getting banned and shit, um, somebody who might get banned is TikTok for the United States. Because the Supreme Court or whatever these assholes are called, I don't know what they're called, the majority fucking the House or Senate or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the there's three there's three houses or some shit judicial or some some ass. I don't know it. I don't know it. But one of these fuckers that votes for this ass for these votes for these bills and these laws to take in place. They voted yes. On a law that if President Biden signs this law will force TikTok, which is owned by some Chinese company. To sell it to a U.S. owned entity in order to continue operating in the U.S. If they do not sell it to a U.S. owned entity, then they will be banned from the United States of America. So t TikTok will still be in all over the world except America. Now, I am 100% against communism. And against fucking, you know, this ass about socialism and the government fucking controlling and, and shit like that. I am against it. And if the Chinese have an application that you are giving permission for them to access your calls, your camera, your recording devices, your history, because that's what you do when you accept, you give them permission to access everything. That's Every company, every app, they fucking know everything about you. This is a Chinese company who is getting every kid in America and everybody in America to give permission so that they know everything about us. That is dangerous. But at the same time, isn't doing this, passing this fucking law, exactly what the Chinese do in their country? Where they force people like, no, it's got to be our way or nothing. This is a very dangerous situation. Because though I agree that there is another country right now that does have a lot of digital information from Americans because of TikTok. They do. They know how most of the youth thinks now. And they know what they like in their patterns. They know this already. I get the U.S. and why they're trying to do this, but by them doing this, you're being a you're being fascist. You're being a communist. This is like bad for for everyone. Everything that's happening. Ah, it's it's a very tricky situation. That's all I'm gonna say. I am neither for this or against it. I'm indecisive. I can tell you that the old man is going to sign it because they're going to tell him, just sign it. Okay, okay. He's just going to sign anything because he's an idiot. He's senile. And he signs everything those fucking other fucking dumbasses tell him to sign. So he does it. The idiot. Uh, so he, this is probably going to happen. And you know, all these kids are going to get mad because they're going to take... I'm going to get mad because we get 200 views every day on the TikTok videos. I mean, that's a lot of views. 200. That's more than our fucking YouTube videos. You bitches. We got 550 fucking subscribers and only 60 views. What the fuck? What are the other subscribers doing? That's all I'm asking. Anyways. All right, we're done with this TikTok ass. We can't finish the weekly pop culture breakdown without talking about the Yeezy. Aw, yeah. And Yeezy? Went off on all of the haters because they've been fucking hating on him and shit. And he went off because his album's at the top. Billboard's charting. He's making millions of dollars. He's about to go on tour. It's going to be great. But he came out and he ranted on, on, on IG and he said, Rich Ty Cardi and the supporters that stood by us through everything. This is number one. It's for you. It's for the people who won't be manipulated by the systems or the Jews. Fuck Adidas. Fuck everyone that works there with them. Anyone who goes to school with any one of them fucking Jewish parents that works for Adidas. 
just know they try to destroy me and here we are number one song in the world motherfuckers like the fake dude I saw in the lobby at the Ritz, the fucking white guy with the red hair and with a fucking little Jewish star hanging out from his fucking chain and shit that works with the goat. You pussies don't stand for shit. Fuck everybody at the Daily Mail and fuck you, everybody in the fashion houses that sided with Gabby and Hailey Bieber. Fuck you, Justin Bieber and your crooked face falling asleep all the time, you motherfucker. Fuck each and every single one of y'all and fuck every Christian that watched me have my kids taken out of my control, you fucking demonic sons of bitches. That's how I feel. And it's fuck Drake for talking Dirk right from the beginning of the Vultures rollout. Yeah, fuck you, Drake, Jewish piece of shit. I'll come back for all of y'all if I think there's more fuck yous. He deleted this like 15 minutes later. Uh, Luckily, there's snapshots, which I was able to fucking read it for y'all. But it's really just went off and everybody he's just tired. He's tired of everybody just talking shit and he not saying anything back. I mean, he'll come after you if you need it. That's all he wanted to say. Uh, but he did have more news regarding Miss Miss Westie his his bestie. Don't try to test me. It's going to get messy. His daughter Northwest motherfuckers. Because he took her on stage from one of his premiere albums and shit, or what his tour he's doing and shit. And she had a message for the audience, which I'm gonna fucking bust for you right here. Check this little girl out talking to everybody. And I've been working on an album for. And it's called Elementary School Dropout. And everybody's been coming out saying this is bad. She's getting influenced by her rapper father. Fuck you. Everyone's jealous. This little girl is the youngest fucking person to ever chart on the billboards with talking. And that was just a sample. It wasn't even. She's working on an album. And if at least one of the songs in this album that is going to come out probably this year. Kanye works fast. I don't know if you notice. These albums get done fast and get put out fast. This motherfucker done, like, the record labels take forever to fucking... We gotta get promotions, we gotta figure out this and that, and fuck you, Kanye does it like that, motherfuckers. This album will come out this year. And if there's at least one song, one song that's, like, talking, this little girl is gonna become the youngest artist, right, to probably win a Grammy. I'm telling you like that. And it's gonna be all because of her father. And everyone's just jealous because this guy loves his kid and his kid loves him back. And they find something that they both like together. He sees that she wants to do this and he's helping her out. Everybody wants to hate. Fuck you for hating on Yeezy and hating on Miss Westy. Motherfuckers. That's all I'm going to say for that. All right. Um, But I do want to say that Yeezy did have another badass day because he did have a listening party for Vultures 2, which is coming out soon. Can't wait till it drops. And something amazing happened. His ex-wife and wife were seated together. And they loved each other. They loved each other enough that they even gave each other a hug. It happened, my friends. And they're there listening to Kanye listen to his album. Because he's not performing. It's just, let me put the CD, the MP3, play. Everybody listen to this. He's just up there. Everybody's listening to it. That's what the listening party is. Um, it's amazing. But it's also dangerous. Because what if Kim is going to try to fucking infiltrate through her, manipulate her, uh, uh, initiate her into the cabal so she can be a spy again, fucking over Kanye. Another snake in the grass, my friends. That's how they start. Sons of bitches. This is dangerous. Yeezy, you better keep an eye out on this. All right. Keep an eye out on both of them. For sure. 
there is a little bit of controversy because Yeisei did have to perform at some kind of Rockapalooza or some Coachella. Some, some fucking stupid ass fucking shit that kids do. Some concerts with a bunch of bands and shit. And Yeezy was going to be the main performer at the end of the night. Well, Yeezy came out and he performed. And I'm going to play the video, but there's no sound. Alright? Because we'll get banned. But basically, it's like he... This is what this happening. It sounds like someone went and pressed play on the MP3. And he's just walking out. In a mask, all in black, like Jason Voorhees or whatever. And he's just moving around. Everybody's moving around. Nobody has a microphone. Nobody has a microphone. So they're telling you already nobody's singing. There's a recording in the back. And that's basically what you're listening to. You're listening to a recording. And people were not happy about it. You can imagine the complaints, but I'll put you like the most smartest logical complaint i saw on the internet this person says you know i paid 60 dollars for parking because nowadays these concerts suck ass they don't even have parking and when they do make parking they fucking charge you to park there your car is still gonna fucking get broken into you're gonna get stuck in the mud because it rained the night before and it's all dirt and shit not even paved fucking parking and shit get a flat tire you'll be stuck there for days and you still have to pay 60 dollars for it on top of that you go over there and anything you buy, the t-shirt's probably 50 bucks for a t-shirt. If you want to buy a Sprite or a water, it's like $26. If you want a hamburger, it's like 50 bucks. Like, it's really expensive nowadays, these fucking bullshit concerts. He said the ticket itself was $140. And I was way in the back. I had to use my iPhone 15 to zoom in all the way so I can see AZ. And even then, he was wearing a mask, so I don't even know if it's really him. And he says, there was no other sets besides his. And I expected a performance. Well, technically, you did get a performance. It's a bunch of dancing and shit. That's about it. That's all I'm going to say. I love Yeezy. But even I think this is bullshit. Even I think this is bullshit. Cheers, Carl Larson. Cheers. If you pay, especially that much, for a concert, you expect a motherfucker to be holding a mic and fucking rapping or singing or whatever the fuck he's supposed to be doing up there. Not only that, but how do you even know it's him? Look, I went to go see A Perfect Circle years, years ago. But I bought a ticket to go see them on Halloween, out of all days. And uh, when the band came out, they were wearing Halloween costumes. Elvis, Little Bo Peep. Fucking the drummer was the guy from, from Devo. He was like one of the drummer from Devo. He had the, the yellow thing with the cap on or whatever. And Maynard, the singer, had these big fucking huge... I don't know, uh, well, I don't know what they're called. Those clown pants where they're wide and shit. He was a clown. He had a big red fro. His face was white. And he had a nose. He was a clown. And um, after the first two songs, I got pissed because I was just like, I paid to see a fucking clown. I don't even know if that's him. It could be just fucking some guy who went out there and fucking there's a recording in the back. Maynard took a night off. Fuck you. So I was really mad. And then when I went to go see Tool that year, Maynard's in the back with his back turned. So, like this. Singing for the whole concert with his back turned. And I was like, what am I paying for here? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of understand where these kids are coming from. Because they're, they had to somehow you know, beg their parents for this money, maybe promise them to do something that they're going to do. But even then, the effort of fucking convincing their parents is a lot. So I feel for them. But God damn it, man. This is bullshit, Kanye. I love you, Kanye. But this is bullshit.
People pay for a concert. You better have a microphone, and there better be spit and ass coming out of your mouth. That's all I'm going to say. That goes for anybody out there who wants to be a performer and shit. Because that's just bullshit to me. Uh, anyways, that's it for the pop culture breakdown, motherfuckers. Cheers. Just going to get another beer here. Cheers, y'all. <sighs> All right. Let's get started with the weekly uh, comic book nerd shit. And oh my god, I gotta stop everything because Andrew Sanchez from the motherfucking Philippines just showed up. And I gotta hit it for this motherfucker. I pray to God I'm hitting the right button, but let me hit his intro. We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. Hey! That's probably a really racist uh, intro, but none of us know what he's saying, but it's all good. Ah, cheers, Andrew Sanchez. Cheers to Andrew. Cheers to Joku. Cheers to Colin. Gomer, who's listening. And the cut, who's probably there, passed out because it's really early in the morning for him. And Jose Trevino. Cheers. But we're going to start. With some news coming out of the mouth of the great Steven Spielberg. Because Steven Spielberg has come out and said that, hey, I'm working on the script and pre-production for Ready Player Two. I don't know about you guys, but I had never read and I knew nothing about Ready Player One. But I went to the theaters because it's Steven Spielberg and I enjoyed it. And it, it was that kid that was a Cyclops from the X-Men movies that... You know, they, when they were young, I forget what they were called, uh, first class or whatever. It was good. But I was like, where do you go now in part two? Because I think in part one, I mean, he fixed everything and life was going to get better for everybody or some bullshit like that. I don't know. I mean, the reason why I was so attracted to this movie and why I loved it so much is because honestly, I want that to be real. I want a world, a digital world we go into and fucking fuck people up. Ba -ba 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 <laughs> and shit. That's what I wanted. Would be fucking Goku with powers flying around and shit. Stuff I can't do in real life. God damn it. Assassin's Creed. Sneak up on somebody. You know what I'm saying? This is the kind of shit that we're doing on this. And you go in like a virtual world. People have avatars. I mean, I go in Fortnite and I buy different skins and shit. But imagine if you could actually be that. That's why it was so cool. And I wanted it. Um... I, I mean, Steven Spielberg's good, man. Especially when he works by himself and he's not associated with other people and shit. And he just, you know, he's let to do his own thing. He, you know, he's he's not a hit or miss guy. He does good fucking family movies that are not lame. You know, the Goonies. I love the Goonies. Uh, but this, this is a, this is a potential, potential. I don't know what part two is about. I don't know the books. I never read them. I don't know. I have no interest in reading this ass. But we'll see whenever the trailer comes out because this is definitely going to happen, apparently. So, cheers to this. Good me. Something else that happened this week is that Shigeru Miyamoto son, he announced a Super Mario Brothers 2 movie, but not really. They said we are making a sequel. But it's not really a sequel. This is a movie set in the same universe with uh, different characters. So this is not going to be Super Mario Bros. Movie Part 2. If you ask me, I know what it is. It's Yoshi Island or some ass like that. 
Because the end of credit scene, we saw the old Yoshi egg in the human world. It's going to be a Yoshi movie. I mean, the, this is what it's going to be. It's not going to be Super Mario Brothers. It's going to be like Yoshi's Island or some shit. Or it could be a Kirby. Imagine if they do Kirby. A Kirby movie. That'd be fucking crazy. Who could be Kirby? I don't know. Who could be Yoshi? They're going to make Yoshi talk. They better not choose like Aquafina or some bullshit like that. Or John Cena. That's all I'm saying. Because, you know, I, like, I like the Super Mario Brothers movie. But it's a movie for children with low attention spans. Because it's really fast. It's fast paced and doesn't give enough time to breathe or take anything in. And that's because it's aimed towards fucking children with ADHD and shit. Like Nintendo knows what they're targeting. The money, the money makers, all the disabled children. They're targeting all the disabled. So they make these types of movies that are just all glitchy. And like if a regular person goes sees this, they might have a seizure because it's too fast for them. You know, but that's the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying the certain kinds of lights and switching stuff on and off could fuck you up at any moment. All right. And she gave me a motto and Nintendo know all about it. So maybe that's what they're doing. Just saying. Don't be surprised if this isn't some of the shit up their sleeves. Don't know what they're up to. Mm. Super Mario Brothers sequel. Or sort of coming to you soon. Supposedly. Yeah, yeah. The TV show from the 90s was Fresh Swing, Your Arms from Side to Side, Do the Mario. Yeah, yeah. Burr, burr, burr. It's the Mario Brothers. The bear, the bear. A -da 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 -da. Yeah, I remember that shit. Ah, it was fucking Captain Lou Bega, dude. Fucking WWE back in the day. Cheers, Colin Larson. Oh. Captain Lou Bega, that son of a bitch. Oh, that guy's badass. Oh, all right, let's move on. Because guess what? After losing, uh, I forget what this little girl name was. The little girl went and went all fucking like, fuck, fuck the Jews and the Palestinian pride, even though she's a Mexican. They fired her ass. And then Jenna Ortega quit. They brought out their big guns. They asked Nev Campbell to come back for Scream 7, and she said yes. It's only a matter of time before they announce we just got Courtney Cox to come back to and David Arquette. This is a money grab already. You had established new characters that were going to take the franchise in a new direction. And now you're going back. Nostalgia. Remember berries. We fired the Mexican girls for standing out for the brown people in the Middle East. We need our big guns. White. Good looking. Nev Campbell. Party of five. Hot as fuck. Macy Chabert. All these other guys, I don't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well... I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I think I only saw the first two screams. I didn't even bother with the rest of them. Uh, because it just kind of got all, to me, kind of repetitive. I mean, you know. How many motherfuckers are going to dress up as this goddamn ghost face and shit? I don't know. It's kind of like Michael Myers, you know. I really only did it. Probably only saw like two or three of them. And that's about it. Same thing with the other ones. Nightmare on Elm Street and... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Friday the 13th or some ass. Whatever they're called. Personally, I only see the first few because it made no sense to keep on going if this is going to be the same shit over and over and over again. Who's going to be the killer? Oh, oh the brother, the son of the, of the relative of the fucking, what was his name? Cotton from the first movie. That's going to be the killer in this one. Fuck you! You already had fucking bullshit like that. God damn it. I don't know. I just I don't I'm not excited about this. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame that these muff you know what? I don't want to be Kanye, so I'm just gonna fucking start saying something different. I'm gonna say these Palestinian haters because that's what they are. It's a damn shame that these Palestinian haters 
own these movie studios and, and fucking get to say what you can and cannot say in your in in America when we have freedom of speech. Fuck you. Social media is mine. I can say whatever I want. Are you gonna fire me for my job? Fuck you. You know when you start telling people that they cannot say what they what they believe in that only what they can only say what you believe in. You're being a fucking fascist and a Nazi, you piece of shit. You goddamn Palestinian hater. Because that's what they are. They're Palestinian haters. They're brown haters. They hate us brown people. I don't want to say their names, but Kanye knows their names. They just put it like that. God damn it. Scream 7 coming to you next year. What is coming to you, I think this year, or some shit like that, it's none other than The Crow with Bill Skarsgård. We finally got a trailer. <laughs> and this is nothing, nothing like the fucking original movie. Which personally, I am very happy with. I'm going to come back to showing you this trailer. But I want to get into this discussion. Because when this trailer came out, right away, it got a lot of dislikes. But it did get as many likes, maybe fewer likes, maybe 10 by 10,000. It's probably got more. These, these numbers have changed, but I, I, I took this screenshot a while ago. These numbers have probably changed. Um, but people did, did not seem to be liking this at all. And... I understand why they don't like this. Because it's nothing. Nothing at all. Like this. It's nothing like Brandon Lee's. But my opinion from the start has always been this. If they would have done a copycat of this... If they would have done Skarsgård with long hair, wet long hair down to his fucking chin, white powdered face with the black lipstick. And if you would have looked like that, I, I promise you, everybody would have shitted on it. I promise you, I would have hated it. And I promise you, it would have been a dishonor. A fucking dishonor to fucking Brandon Lee and this character. It needed to be reinvented. It needed to be different. Yeah, there's some tattoos that I would get rid of. The one in the middle is badass. The rest of the stuff is kind of shitty. You could have done something better. Um, and look, Jose Trevino says, is that Darby? Darby Allen? I think Darby Allen would have been a better, like his tattoos, the way Darby looks, would have been even a little bit better. Like you could even have his face tattooed where half of it would have been a skull. Like literally half of his face is tattooed like a fucking skull and shit. And the, like, you know, because I mean, it's only natural that tattoos has to be in, involved in our day and age. So it was going to happen. I like that it's like this oil aesthetic to it. Let me go back. Let me go back to, to the trailer and shit. But I like that it's this oil aesthetic to it. And that he's more. More like an actual superhero with powers now. Because in the other one, it was like, yeah, he kind of had power. But this is like. This is like they're showing him like some crazy shit where they a bunch of people shoot him, you know, and he's bleeding all over the place and all this black stuff. Like they're adding more of a superhero element to it. It's kind of cool. That part where he takes the fucking sword out. I think it's amazing. Uh, I want to give it a chance. I want to see what the movie's like, because I think visually, I think it's good. And I think this is. This is not what I would have done, but this is still better than if they would have done the exact same thing, which I would not have liked. From the beginning, I did not want it to look like Brandon, Brandon Lee's. I did not want it to look like Sting. 
I did not want it to look like the crow we all know. I didn't. I like, this needs to be different. I, I like it, and I'm going to give it a chance when I see the movie. I don't know. It might suck ass. The plot and everything might suck ass. But I kind of like visually what they've shown in the trailers. Now, that just goes to show and say that this is just the trailer because we've seen a lot of badass trailers and then we see the fucking movie and it's nothing but ass, right? So, just saying, the trailer is making this look appealing to me. Yeah. He does look like Darby Allen. I think Darby Allen might, uh, should sue in some way. <laughs> No, nah, they just, they probably, it, it wouldn't have looked better if it was Darby Allen, where it would have been skull, bones, and shit. Uh, on half of his body, or parts of his body would have been cool, but then he, then Darby would have really been able to sue. I'm surprised they didn't use one of Kanye's new songs, because there's like, Kanye's, there, one of his new songs, he goes, We ain't Columbine, but we came in with the trenches. With the trenches. And I'm like, that's so fucking badass. Uh, it's a cool line. But talking about being all in black with trench coats. It is cool. It reminds me of like kind of the Matrix type of shit. But with fucking, you know, this, whatever this aesthetic is. But we'll see. We'll see what this movie turns out. It's been really decisive on the internet. People are not liking it. Um, but... Before I take uh, another quick break, let me get the bullshit out of the way and quickly run through a quick review of Halo. Because I do not want to talk about this a lot. This is not as good as the last episode. And basically, McKee and Master Chief, they meet each other again and we find... They still don't explain why this bitch is still alive. Why, how has she survived? This is what this is the worst part about this series is that you have brand new writers and new fucking uh, directors that are not following the story from the last one because they don't even explain how this little girl is alive because she's supposed to be dead from the last one. But basically, she wants to find the ring to make a new home. She doesn't care about the humans or the aliens. Master Chief's all like, you're being a dumbass because there's a war going on and somebody's going to have to take a side. But anyways, they get pulled out of the ring. All hell breaks loose. Blah, blah, blah. A bunch of ass. Uh, I'm showing you the good parts of the fucking... Uh, episode. See, I'm lost for words. Because I'm not even like whatever about it. There is some fucking cool shit where McKee... Um, she decides to take the, the mark of the Arbiter. And she fucking, you know, burns herself. To prove her loyalty to him and the cause of finding the ring. And that kind of convinces him to say she is with me. Like, now we're bound together. That was pretty cool. Came out of nowhere because, I mean, like I told you, McKee shouldn't exist in this Halo world. Another big thing that pisses me off is that Eckerson, a character that for the first five episodes of this series was being shown to us as the bad guy, the evil guy, the heartless guy you should hate is now trying to gain sympathy from the audience and show that Perengoski is the one sending off these fucking uh, uh, Spartans or these humans to go die. And he's like, but they, they're not trained and they're all going to die. And she sees the plan and the plan is to like, if we can't succeed, we're just going to blow everything up. And he's all like, fuck. And so like now... The guy we've been hating for five fucking episodes because you've been writing him to be a piece of shit and a dick. Now we're supposed to be like he's human and has feelings. Fuck you. You don't even stick to your own writing, which is pathetic. Master Chief catches up. They, he should kill him right here. Because he's been an asshole, betrayed him, pretty much left them for dead without any of their armor, betrayed them, all of Reach, millions of people died because of this piece of shit who's following orders apparently from that fucking Indian lady. And then he tells him, no, I'm here to help you guys, I'm a good guy. And they say, okay, we're gonna trust you. Fuck you. And now he's part of the good guys. Fuck you. I don't know who the fuck wrote this, but this is ass. 
There's been only one episode that's been good this whole season. There's eight episodes. This is episode seven. The last episode was the only good episode I liked. Then we get to some cool stuff where fucking Quan and her mystical visions and Halsey and uh, uh, Miranda Keys, they find this technology and this alien map. And I thought it was a map towards the Halo ring, but I think because they still don't explain because they start seeing the little lights on the stars turning red and slowly it starts spreading across the solar system. And Quan gets all scared and it says, this is something bad. We need to get out of here. And I think that map that was showing them that all of a sudden the stars were turning red and spreading. That's the recording of the flood spreading through the universe before eventually all was dead. And so I think they're slowly mentioning the flood without telling us they're mentioning the flood, which is the only thing that that I fucking liked in this episode because I caught that I was all like I think that's the flood that's not the halo uh, coordinates because they're showing that the red thing is spreading right there it's spreading all across the universe and Quan gets scared because Quan and her mystical powers like Jose Trevino says she recognizes that oh this is something bad this isn't like a map this is like a recording of something bad that's gonna happen and she tells him we need to get out of here and shit. That's the flood, and they're they're mentioning. It. But anyways, it ends at the very end with Master Chief finally reaching the halo because he has the coordinates. And uh, we finally see the halo in all its glory, and it looks different than the design they used in the first season, which is another thing that's pissing me off why these new directors and showrunners have to change the look of Cortana and the look of the goddamn Halo ring. Fuck you. One episode left. One episode. And it's not going to give us any satisfaction of anything. It, it, there's probably going to be some, maybe a short battle with one or two forces. Maybe Master Chief versus the Arbiter in the Halo ring with McKee there. But we're not going to see a big fight or anything, and it's going to stay to be continued. This is like one episode. You can't finish nothing of this. Like, the first five episodes you could have done without, and you could have actually followed what they left after episode, after the last season. And it would have been way better. Fuck you, whoever wrote this show. Fuck you, these new showrunners. Fuck you, Paramount. Um, I'm very disappointed in this. I The season one was not perfect. And there was maybe out of 10 episodes, there was three episodes that I didn't like. And there's a lot of issues with it because obviously people don't like that he took the helmet off. And I kind of didn't at first, but I went with it. I didn't like this McKee character because... She's not in the lore out of nowhere, but I got used to her and I liked what they were. Well, I like what they were doing to her until she slept with Master Chief, which was unnecessary and came out of nowhere. Um, uh, I just I don't know. By them switching directors and switching writers is where they fucked up. And, and when, like one of the first interviews I read before watching the second season, it said that there was things they didn't like from the first season and they were just not going to even, if you're going to ignore or not talk about them, we're doing something else. We're not going to include them in the second season. That's why this is no good to me. Story-wise, it is no good. It doesn't follow its own continuity and it only confuses the viewer even more. The characters don't even stick to what they're supposed to be. This guy's supposed to be evil the first five episodes, and now he's trying to be a good guy. I care. I care. You care? You just just you just let a whole fucking planet of millions of people die, but now you care? Fuck you. That happened like two episodes ago. We're supposed to forget that that guy is responsible for Reach dying? All those people? All of a sudden, he's a good guy? He doesn't want to let a few soldiers die? Oh, the, the few soldiers are going to die. You just, a whole planet just died because of you. You didn't care then. Now you care because a few soldiers are going to die. Fuck you. This is written by idiots who are not even following their own story. One episode left, one more week of ass. Cheers.
All right. Moving on to DC ass. Peacemaker season two is officially going to start filming this summer. Oh, yeah. That's badass. I don't know if you all saw Peacemaker. I really enjoyed it. It was cheesy. It was ridiculous. And somehow it still worked in a modern day setting. And John Cena, John Cena is uh it's a pretty funny guy. I'll just put it like that. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. Um uh, I like I like that they're they're finally going to start season two. But some other news came out with this badass news. Because apparently James Gunn has stated that season two of Peacemaker is not going to be canon to this new DCU he's building. What? How can this be a season two if this is not canon to your new universe? What? Ah, so obviously I'm not the only nerd on the internet who thought of this question. And they asked him on threads, meta threads. And he answered. And his reply was because all the events didn't happen in the DCU. I mean, most do, but there are a few things outside the lines, so I can't say it's pure canon. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Oh. Number one, I understand the statement that season one is not canon. I understand that completely. Because at the end of season one of fucking Peacemaker, the Justice League cameos. Well, only the actors they could pay and who were who were not in trouble at or not in any trouble at the moment. Because Ezra Miller eventually got in trouble. But the only ones that they showed face and had lines was Jason Momoa and 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 uh, Barry Allen, uh, Ezra Miller. The other guys where the stand-ins were there, but their faces were in shadows. But you knew it was supposed to be Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot and Batman, Affleck. So you knew it was supposed to be them, but it wasn't. It was stand-ins that they didn't show their faces. So I know why he says that season one is not canon. But then I don't understand why he says all the events didn't happen. Most do. But there are a few things. Also, well, what are you talking about, James Gunn? And that's another thing. Jose Trevino just brought up a good fucking thing. He says, if it's canon, then Suicide Squad will be the first gun movie to the universe. Yeah. Is Suicide Squad going to be canon? Or is some of the things going to be canon? Only the shit with his wife is going to be canon. This son of a bitch. That's what he means. Only the character. Any character that talked to my wife, they're in the universe. The rest of them are not. Fuck him. This is... This is bad, my friends. This is going to confuse... If it's confusing us nerds who have been watching this ass, maybe not paying for it like me. I don't pay for ass. Not when I get it for free. But if this is confusing the nerds, what the fuck do you think it's going to do for the goddamn average viewer? For the general audience who says, oh, here's a superhero shit everyone's talking about. Let me watch it. I watched the last season. This should be a continuation. Fuck you. Ah. Crazier part. He says that this season two is literally a continuation from the Superman movie that will come out. 
So we're supposed to see the Superman movie first. And then right after that, we're going to see season two of Peacemaker. That is basically continuation from that story. It's supposed to blend in. Everything's going to be connected in this new universe. <sighs> this is trouble, you guys. James Gunn. This is trouble. I mean, it sounds like trouble. I don't know. He might be a genius. It might turn out that this is all good. All of a sudden, this son of a bitch pulls a fast one on all of us. We were wrong about him. Here's another rocket raccoon and another Groot. Another hit. Could be. But right now, what this is sounding like is ass. But since we are talking about ass, this son of a bitch doesn't have any fucking time that he always has enough time to show off about stuff he's doing. And the one thing he isn't doing is his wife, which he should be. Instead of TikToking, Twittering, and Meta, and all this ass, social medias. But he wants to show off that these motherfuckers are not using the Disney Dome. Hey, we're not being cheap like Bob Iger. And, and putting us in a dome with actors and shit, with a, with a screen and shit. No, I'm taking these sons of bitches to Norway, to the Arctic. And we're going to freeze Superman's balls off. And he's going to fucking look badass with real snow and polar bears in the background. Penguins, too. The forces of solitudes, we're going to build it out here. This son of a bitch is spending the money that Warner doesn't even have right now. They're literally in the process of selling the goddamn company. And this jackass is all like, let's go to Norway and film. Fuck you, there's studios and fake snow you can use. Idiot. What if one of your actors gets frostbite or falls and breaks his leg in the snow because they don't know how to walk in the snow like a dumbass because they, they live over there in Los Angeles and shit where it never snows. God damn it, James Gunn. Uh, we also got our first look of Gabriela. Uh, uh, Maria Gabriela. The actress that's going to play the engineer, one of the bad guys, who's not a bad guy. Antagonist, I guess you want to call it. I don't know. Her character is some kind of scientist who, I don't know, has some kind of powers where she turns silver or liquid or mercury. Not only that, but her hands, she could transform them into to knives or guns or anything she wants. I mean, her whole body, she can grow stuff. Like, basically, Blue Beetle. You know how Blue Beetle in the movie, anything he thinks of, his hands can make and shit. That's what she does, but she's all silver and shit. Uh, yeah, this little girl's hot and shit. But already, this is all some CGI fuckfest. Some really different suit. Like, is her suit gonna be all silver? They're going to fix that in production. She's attached to some kind of rig where she's floating. and shit. Uh, good night, Colin. We'll catch you next week, motherfucker. Uh, I don't know what this is going to be. And I don't know exactly what gun is going for. I think this is going to be all CGI. A layer of like liquid silver all over her. I feel like that's what it's going to be. I don't know. I mean, they chose a pretty girl. I'm playing with that. She's a cute little girl. Even she got a woke ass fuck haircut. Uh, yeah, a cute little girl. Whatever the fuck. Didn't give her the mohawk from this picture I found, but they gave her some cool fucking. You know, maybe I should get my hair like that. What do you all think? I look fucking mean like that. Shave the sides of my, shave my sides here. And shit. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways. You know where, where James Gunn is fucking up, to be honest with you? The main reason he's fucking up is because on Superman's birthday, he showed us the S and only the S. We're already getting leaks from the set of the villains or the actors or some shit. In about a week, this is me calling it. In about a week. We're going to see leaked photos of corn sweat in the Superman suit. Because if you're filming these on locations, that motherfucker has to come out and film eventually in the suit. You idiot. 
you're already filming scenes with the villains. He has to come out here in the next week. And this dumbass, instead of him presenting him in the suit, you know, badass picture that the studio worked on and put out, and presenting it on Superman's birthday, instead, you're going to get some amateur fucking photographer on their cell phone taking a picture from far away, zooming in. And that is bad marketing. You should have just shown it off on Superman Day. Shown it off the, the final version. Because you know goddamn well it's going to leak in the next week or two. I promise you, we'll have it here because it's gonna some, some other assholes are going to have it before us because we don't do the show until Friday. But I'm telling you, we'll have it here just like everyone else. In the next week or two, we're probably going to see the actual image of him on set. It's going to happen. I'm telling you. And James Gunn's an idiot for not showing it to everybody on Superman's birthday and instead only teasing it. Motherfucker, you know goddamn well it's going to leak. You should have shown it. Idiot. Anyways. I'm done talking about James Gunn and his ass. Assery. Well, I wish I was. Unfortunately, the assery of the ass continues. This time, it's not directly coming from him, but it is involving James Gunn. Because actress Karen Gillen, in an interview, says that she would love to jump ship to the MCU instead of being fucking Nebula and shit. Because Nebula's dead. I think she did. Did she die? No, she didn't die. She just, I'm not going to be a guardian of the galaxy anymore. Because James Gunn got fired. I don't want to be here anymore. He says she would love to be Poison Ivy. And she would love it if they make fucking a love a movie. Where it's a love story with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. Because of the wokeness nowadays. <sighs> this is happening. Just the same way Dave Bautista wants to be Bane. Which is going to happen. And the same way Star-Lord is most likely going to be Booster Gold, because he's perfect for it. James Gunn's going to make him Booster Gold, just you wait, fucking Chris Pratt. Fucking idiot. This little girl here, Karen Gillan, is going to be Poison Ivy kissing Margot Robbie. Because it sounds like James Gunn likes Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Question is, who the fuck's going to be the Joker? Because it better not be Jared Leto. God damn it. And it better not be that fucking salt burn son of a bitch. Uh, I don't even know that Irish son of a bitch. It better not be his name, the Ezra Miller looking motherfucker. Yeah. I don't know. I know who they choose. Maybe Bill Skarsgård. You can look at the crow with like a lipstick and shit. Maybe he could be the new Joker. I don't know. Fuck you, James Gunn. You're fucking up. You're hiring all your friends like Adam Sandler and shit. You dumbass. Cheers. Anyways, moving on to some Sony ass. They just announced that the third Venom movie is actually going to be called The Last Dance. <sighs> really? Who the fuck is writing these movies? Who the fuck is coming up with these titles? None of these. That has nothing to do with Venom. Just the word dance in general should never be put in the sentence with Venom. It makes no sense. Ah, And who knows what this movie is going to be? Because the ass we had heard that it was going to be, but I got a feeling it's not, was that it's Venom trying to protect a 10-year-old Peter Parker from getting killed from a symbiote. Uh, which is going to be Toxin. Uh, Donnie Wahlberg, or whatever. Um, already the story sucks ass. I think they changed it because what they're filming doesn't look like what the spoilers had leaked. So I think they changed the story. I don't know what it is right now. We'll see what else leaks out. But just the title itself is 
unattractive, to say the least. For fuck's sakes. Ah, oh, Sony, Sony, Sony. Look, you goddamn Japanese, you're good at your anime. But you leave our American fucking franchises alone. And fire every average for the fuck's sakes. That guy's too damn old to be fucking writing these fan fiction stories that he's fucking shitting out. Fuck that guy. He needs to get fired. Sony has lost billions of dollars because of this fucking idiot and his stories and his comment. Do this movie. And fuck you. You make a movie about Spider-Man villains without Spider-Man in it. Fuck you, Averett. You idiot. Ugh. But we're not done with a Sony ass. Because there's some controversy that happened because of the Oscars. Alright. Because we said that Godzilla minus one won the Oscar for the best visual effects. Right? But I didn't mention that the Oscar for the best animated film went to The Boy and the Heron. For that fucking Japanese guy who always wins and shit. I think he made, I don't know, it was the Spirited Wind or some ass. I don't know, some little Japanese shit that everybody loved. He made it. He also won an Oscar for that. I knew a son of a bitch was going to win the minute they fucking said that he was in the category. I was like, ah, oh, this fucking Japanese guy's going to win. And he won. But the problem was, is that he was going up against Sony's Spider-Verse. Miles Morales, they're hit. They're billion dollar franchise, just like fucking Tom Holland. Well, the actor, the 35 year old actor who plays the teenager, the voice of the teenager in the movie, Shamik Moore, decided to fucking quote on Twitter, X. Robbed. We were robbed by these motherfucking uh, communist Japanese motherfuckers. He was mad. Being racist. And if you ask me, be a little bit of a sore loser. Fuck you. The fact. You know what? I'm already pissed because this dumbass is all saying that he wants to play the live action Miles Morales. Motherfucker, have you not seen the movie? You look nothing like this kid. Nothing. Your body is not built like this kid. And not only that, but you're almost 37 years old. You idiot. How are you going to play a teenager in a fucking live action movie? Dumbass. And now you want to be a sore loser because the movie lost to a, a, a Japanese animated movie who's superior to yours. It is. I haven't seen it. I'm going to download it this weekend and probably going to catch it and watch it. You know what it is. My VPN, uh, uh, Jack Sparrow Bay. Cheers. This is um this is getting old about people not knowing how to take a loss you know with class you know most of the time nobody's even thinking about the loser so you even never say anything and no one's going to think nothing about you but you say something like this when you lost and then everybody's like well this guy's a fucking dumbass you know what I'm saying? We're talking like if you wouldn't even said nothing, no one's even gonna think twice about you. You go on living your life as normal. You idiot. Being Miles Morales. Now you gotta be the guy who's a sore loser for the rest of your fucking life because you fucked up. Ah, oh, embarrassments left and right with Sony. Left and right. But spirit, speaking of embarrassments, move on to some Star Wars ass. And director Patty Jenkins has not come out and said, Hey, since James Gunn fired Gal Gadot and told me that they're not doing nothing that I want to do. No, no Wonder Woman and ass. I'm free. So I asked for my job back at Lucas and they said, you're hired because we need we need to make money. <laughs> so she's back at Lucasfilms doing her Rogue One Squadron movie. 
Go figure, huh? When you fail in one studio, you go to another. Fuck it. As long as you're a lesbian, you're woke as fuck, you get hired. This is what it is. Cheers to Patty Jenkins. In her feminist ways. Her Palestinian hating German feminist ways. Cheers. Moving on to the real ass of the show. Because Patty Jenkins don't got much of it. Shang-Chi in the Marvel. It's finally coming out and they're saying the sequel will have we have some spoilers. And the sequel is supposed to have Iron Fist involved. No word on if this is what Iron Fist this is going to be. It might be a woman, might be a black, I don't know. They're like, you know how it is nowadays. But that the movie's going to involve time travel. Back to the future type of shit. So it might not even be modern day Iron Fist. It might end up being a fucking Iron Fist from back in the day. Some fucking Asian Iron Fist. A woman. A woman Iron Fist. Asian. Chinese and shit. Because if you know the Iron Fist, they're supposed to be Asian. Except this fucking kid landed in the snow and shit from an airplane. They crashed and they fucking took him in. And raised him as their own. That's why he's Iron Fist. But it's going to be a fucking woman. Chinese. Probably. Asian. To be along with Simi Lu. And his another themed Asian. Shang Cha. You know Shang Cha would be so cool. If he was actually part of the MCU. Because the way it ended. It seemed like he had just joined the Avengers. And just going to be a team. And all this shit was happening. But then all of a sudden all these other movies came out. And Shang Cha was not in them. At all or mentioned. And I was like, what? They forgot about him? I mean, at the end of the movie, he was with Wong. He was with uh, the Hulk. He was talking to them and also like Captain Marvel. It's already three other movies and shows they showed. This motherfucker didn't show up or didn't know even a word of him at all. And now they're about to make another Shang-Chi part two with him and only Asians. No, he's not part of the MCU. Fuck you, Marvel. Just pretty racist. You're trying to just segregate him from the rest of the Avengers? Why? Because he's fucking Chinese and shit. And the Chinese don't want to see American Avengers next to a Chinese Avenger. Let the Chinese Avenger be by himself. Is that what's going on? Fuck you. This is some ass. Already time traveling. Fuck you. Are you guys not tired of the multiverse jumping from universe to universe not knowing what the fuck is real and what isn't? And now we're about to start time traveling some more. Fuck you. God damn it. Ah, but we're not done with more travesties in the cinematic universe that is Marvel. Because after so many changes, the Agatha House of the Harkness was changed to Agatha. Coven of Chaos was changed to Agatha. Dark Hold Diaries apparently has now changed again, my friends. It has changed to Agatha. So Marvel's joke here is the title of the show. It was Agatha all along. Fuck you, Kevin Feige. That's some bullshit. Ah, this show is going to be littered with transsexuals, homosexuality, and witchcraft, and lesbianism. Littered. And the main thing that they will not have, but they're going to mention, and they're going to show you flashbacks, or like, like, you know, scenes from other movies, how they do, like little clips here, like a memory. You know how they do? But Wanda... The Scarlet Witch is not going to be in the show about witches. This show is nothing but a woke agenda. A forced woke agenda. Gays, lesbians, non-binaries, transsexuals, and all that shit. I promise you. Everybody says I'm being racist. I'm only saying the facts. That's what this show is going to be. 
and it's going to fail. Because when you're not doing what made you money the last, uh, what was it, maybe 15 years ago when they started? I don't even remember how long it's been already when the MCU started. It must have been 15 years ago. The formula was everything is connected. Heroes from one movie fall in and blend into the next one, etc. Side characters in one movie, in the next movie, suddenly became bigger characters. And that's how everything was bleeding into one another. Nothing is connected, and nothing makes sense. And doing shit like this is the reason why you're losing money. Just you wait until this show comes out. I'm going to be reviewing the ass out of it. And I'm probably going to be raping the shit out of it, too. But we'll wait until then. Here's some more assery. Because Marvel just put out a fucking ad or casting for all these agents that they're looking for four, four non-binary actors to play non-binary parts, leads, in one episode of Daredevil Born Again. They are specifically asking for this demographic, if you want to call it that. I don't know how all of a sudden it's a, a race or a demographic. But yes, they are specifically asking for this. They have to be non-binary transsexual. To play these four characters in one episode. And these four characters will be significant to that one episode. You know what, guys? I think I should go try out. I think they might hire me. And then I can get some money in this bitch. Get a better computer, some better lights and shit. I'm being a white guy to press all the buttons, see if I get some money. What do you guys think? Son of man next to Daredevil. What up, Daredevil? Matt Murdock, you blind son of a bitch. You can't see me. John Cena, bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Marvel Studios is an equal opportunity. Employer. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, no whites allowed. No straight Christian whites allowed. Melanie Mac, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Cheers. Um, but since we are talking about these policies, this new agendas, something weird happened this week. Because Bo De Mayo, which is the director, the director of the new X Men ninety seven series, was fired two days ago from Marvel and Disney. This guy is a non binary guy, homosexual. Sometimes he might swing the other way. I don't know. He's ripped as fuck. But he got fired. Two days ago. before A week before the show even premieres. Now there's a lot of factors that are going into this. Because apparently. He did have an OnlyFans. But supposedly he doesn't post nude. Just post his body. All ripped as fuck. But he's a very outspoken non-binary. Very outspoken. And they said that uh, he was a little hard to get along with because he was very outspoken and would say and speak his mind to people. You're racist. You like Trump. Fuck you. Shit like that. Just all of a sudden start screaming. You don't believe in, you believe in Christ. Fuck you. Shit like that. I don't know. There's also rumors 
Uh, this is actually not a rumor because he was the guy who was writing the movie Blade, the new script from Mahershala Ali. The new rumor is that Marvel didn't like, number one, his OnlyFans, which I'm posting the kind of stuff he was posting. They didn't like it. But they didn't like some of the stuff in the X-Men show that he wrote. But they didn't like what he was writing for Blade. Current rumor was that he was demasculating the character. And that there was a woman character, which if the spoilers were correct, is supposed to be his teenage daughter. There's a woman character that was better and pretty much showing him up in the movie. She's better in him. And then Marvel did it like, this is Mahershala Ali, motherfucker. This is Blade. This is all kind of war-winning actor. You're writing a movie where he's going to be a bitch to a woman? He's going to get pissed. So, on top of his OnlyFans, on top of him making Blade into a pussy, and the shit he's added to the X-Men, which we have not seen yet. I'm telling you, this show is going to be littered, littered with homosexuals and non-binaries. Already the fact that they're going to mention in the goddamn show that Morph identifies as non-binary because he doesn't know what form to take, man or woman. <sighs> this show is going to be littered with garbage like that. Just you wait. I can't wait till one of our favorite X-Men is suddenly gay or a lesbian. Just you wait. All hell is going to break loose. And I think Marvel knew, like, this guy's just fucked us over. So they fired his ass. They fired his ass. And they, they already hired someone new to start writing, rewriting Blade again. But there's nothing they can do to save X-Men 97. There's nothing. But this is their own fault. Disney and Marvel. Because this advertisement in front of you says it all, my friends. This says it all. X-Men 97 Marvel Animation. New episodes. New era. This is the new era. The new, new, new world order. That they've been feeding you. It's coming. It's here. It's being... It's forcefully, you're trying to shove it down your throat, but most of us are resisting, we're fighting, we're not biting. They're doing this. You know, the sad part about it is because there is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with being attracted to men, if you're a man, or a woman, to be attracted to a woman. And it probably is not wrong if you're attracted to both. It's just the way you're wired. But these people with this movement and agenda, which I'm telling you, it's just it's a little group. All right? It's a little group. They are doing what they hate, which is trying to force somebody into what they believe. You're doing the same shit where you're all like, when you call the motherfucking Christians Jesus freaks and shit. Because they want to convert you and you need to find Christ to save your soul. And you hate it. I don't like it when somebody tries to force me when the Mormons come and knock on my door and shit. I school the Mormons. I, I don't do that anymore because I started feeling bad. But my roommates, they would be like, I can't believe you did that. I would, I would welcome them in and sit them down and I'd be smoking weed. And they'd be talking. They would not be scared. They would try to freaking. And I would ask them questions and fuck them over because I've read the books. I am above that. I I, I think I, under, I have a better understanding and grasp of reality than they do. And man, I would fucking some of them. They would leave out of here puzzled and confused. <laughs> they were young too. They were kids because. They, they send them out. As soon as you're 18, you got to go do it for two years. Go do it door to door. You do it for two years. And after two years, then you live on with the rest of your life. 
but you devote the first two years after graduation to doing that. That's why they're young. And I would bring them in and I'm like, these kids, they probably haven't even read the whole book. I've read their book and I've read the Bible. I've read the Quran. I've read a lot of books and I've read their book. The, and I, I <laughs> the Latter Day Saints, and I can tell you that book is a lot of sh bullshit. <laughs> so I would school those motherfuckers, but just like that, that you don't like that kind of shit. You're doing the same thing to people. You're doing the same shit to people when you go and you fucking you're trying to force your views and beliefs on like, like this is X Men ninety seven. Why are you inserting your agendas into it? You should have never have touched it. And then you give him Blade so that he can go and do his bullshit that he wants to make this guy fucking less than a woman. This is Blade. A manly black character that we love. Vampire Slayer. God damn it. This is this is their biggest problem. And, and it, the problem continues. It really does because here's another issue that has sprung up. This little girl here. Her name is uh, Danny Lalonders or some ass. I don't know. Some fucking, some fucking one of those names I can't pronounce. All right, it's not my fault. All right, some of these people they use their 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 their, their native names. They switch them. They, they don't want to be Americans, so they switch to their native names. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to switch my Mexican name into Americans. I want to be something like Adams or something like that. You know, Washington. I don't know if I could pass as a wash. My, my hair is kind of gray. I don't know. Anyways, it's it's a name. Lalanders or some shit. Danny Lalanders. Well, this chick has been in charge of working for Marvel's uh, game studios on working on the next Black Panther game that they announced for EA Studios. A triple A game coming to you live. Like the last Avengers game that was a failure and nothing but a let's pay and get your money. That's all that fucking game was. Fuck you. This is probably the kind of game they're making. But anyways, everyone's excited because we're finally going to get a Black Panther game. We still haven't got an Iron Man game. Fuck you. Or a Captain America game. Fuck you. But we're going to get a Black Panther game. I mean, that's not bad. But what's up with the other heroes? You dicks. The Hulk doesn't even have a game. You could just be smashing buildings. That's super easy to make. You idiots. This little girl has started some controversy. And I'm going to show you what she started. Here's a little video. Get ready for this. I have a team of 21 right now uh, for Validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games. But who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Um, and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe, unsafe environments. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something made it okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. Um, look, let me say one thing real quick about this little girl. I'm brown and I'm Mexican. And I've had a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs where Mexicans run it. Educated Mexicans. Women Mexicans. Now, I've had jobs where dumb as fuck Mexicans are running the joint. Guys that are doing illegal stuff running the joint. And I gotta tell you, I've also worked way up north like where I am nowadays with white people who are running the joint. And I gotta tell you, I feel a little safer with white people running the place. It's us browns you gotta be careful about. You know, because I'm the one smoking weed in my car before I go to work. You don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? This little girl saying that, hey, 
I feel safer with people looking like me around me and shit. You want a bunch of motherfuckers with bandanas and tattoos and fucking piercings and shit working with you? I'm telling you, <laughs> not a lot of work gonna be done. Either there are gonna be fights or motherfuckers gonna be high as fuck. Alright? <laughs> that's all I gotta say, you dumb little girl. And as far as your statement goes, I'm gonna say one thing about this dumb little girl. That's some of the most racist shit I've ever heard. I got a team of 21 programmers and none of them are white because I didn't hire a single white person. How in the motherfuck is that not racist? When you exclude one race from what you're doing, that's called racism. Don't matter if you're black or brown or yellow. If you're excluding another demographic, it's because you're being racist. You idiot. It makes no fucking sense. They said, like, why don't I like working with white people about microaggressions? Oh, you don't like someone just telling you, hey, uh, your break was only 15 minutes. It's been half an hour. You need to get back to work. You don't like that? You don't like one sending you, hey, uh, that shit was due last week. Uh, why isn't it done? Do you not like that? Why do you need a mental health day? Like, this is what's problem with these fucking children in the industry. Is that they feel entitled because whoever the fuck raised them, wherever entitled Ivy League school or college they went to, they were taught that they are special and that they matter above everyone else and if somebody goes against them it's racism because they're brown and entitled fuck you we're all human beings you goddamn fucking moron learn you idiot if you don't know how to work with other people then why the fuck are you even working with people in general Get the fuck out of here she basically just says, I only want to work with black people. I only feel safe around black people. How How is that not racism? You know what I'm saying? Can you not be around people in general? Here, this little girl is a piece of shit. And anyone who thinks like her is a piece of shit. Plain and simple. If you can't get along with your fellow human beings or even be in the same room with someone who is not the same fucking skin tone as you, then maybe you shouldn't be allowed to be in fucking public at all. You should just fucking stay at home because you're a piece of shit human being and a racist. Plain and simple. Cheers. Dumbass little girl pissing me the fuck off. This is the way these kids are nowadays. These kids are fucking bullshitters. Uh, anyways, let's move on to some spoilers. Because they are now stating that Henry Cavill did, in fact, take a role in a Marvel movie. And the role is none other than a Wolverine variant in the Deadpool 3 movie. Which makes a lot of sense. Because why would he want to sign up for a franchise where he's going to do 10 movies over 10 years and be obligated to not ride horses or, 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 or fucking grow out his mustache and shit. He has to shave his mustache or because he's filming another movie. Fuck you. He's, he only signed up for a cameo. And they're saying, yes, it is. He's going to be a Wolverine variant, and for some strange reason, he's going to have a trench coat on. A brown trench coat. I don't know why, and I don't know what Logan that is. But all I'm going to say is that this is going to be the tallest Wolverine variant ever. Because Henry Cavill is a tall motherfucker. And Wolverine's Suppose already Hugh Jackman is way taller than what Wolverine's supposed to be. Wolverine's like five four, five foot four, or some shit like that. 
He's or five foot one. I don't know. He's a short motherfucker. But the fact that Ryan Reynolds is a tall motherfucker next to Hugh Jackman, it looks good. But Henry Cavill is tall, man. He's a tall motherfucker. So I wonder what variant of Wolverine he's playing, and I wonder if they're gonna use you know camera angles and shit. But I think this is real, and I think this is happening for sure, a hundred percent. Um, another, this isn't a rumor, this is more like a begging for a job situation, which, uh, let's face it, nowadays Marvel's so desperate, they'll do anything. But none other than Giancarlo Esposito has come out and said, I want to be Charles Xavier in the MCU. Give it to a black man. And while you're at it, give Magneto to a black man and have it be Denzel. Me and Denzel? Charles and fucking Eric Lynch. It'd be perfect. And wow, I want to say, yes, that is perfect. Actor wise, I think they would kill it at the same level as McAvoy and Fassbender killed it, playing off each other. I will say that McAvoy and Fassbender did it better. Uh, you know, acting off each other as Charles and uh, Magneto better than fucking uh, uh, Patrick and, and uh, Sir Ian McKellen did. I will say that their 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 chemistry was better than those two old men. And I think that Denzel and, and having fucking Giancarlo Disposito play off each other would be awesome. But here's where the problem lies. Giancarlo has stated the only thing I would demand is that they don't have me in a wheelchair. He wants to be walking around, fellas. So that kind of pisses me off because we want to see Charles disabled <laughs> in a wheelchair. We all do. Let's be honest. All right. We want it. But... It's already in the comic books, the motherfucker walks. I have a bunch of them. It's... Yes, it's doable. It's already written. It's doable. Alright, this is the MCU. It doesn't have to be the original Charles. It could be this new one they've been, they wrote fucking 10 years ago. And he walks. It, it, it yeah. It could work. It could work. I think this is a, a fucking 80% that Marvel is going to fucking, because he's over here begging for a job, that Marvel's going to say yes and go up to him and say, that you're, you're, we want you because, you know, he wants to do it already. And why wouldn't you want this man to be it? And he's already campaigning for Denzel, even though Denzel knows nothing about none of this ass. But I bet you if this man went up to Denzel and, hey, come on, man, smoke a joint. Come do a movie with me. <laughs> He'd probably do it and shit. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it sound, that sounds good. Here's another casting rumor. They're saying that for sure, 100% Goslin, Ryan Goslin, Ken Dahl is in the MCU. And the two current characters that are at the top of the list for him to be are either... Victor Von Doom, Dr. Doom, or Nero Nova. I forget what this guy's name is, Rand or some shit like that. I don't know if it's Danny Rand. No, that's Iron Fist. I forget what this fucking asshole's name is. But Nova, guy who they based the Nova Corp from. Um, I think it would be a waste to get this pretty boy to be Dr. Doom. If he's going to be behind the mask or, or his face is going to be burnt and disfigured. Why? I think it's obvious he's gonna be Nova. I think uh, I think it's obvious uh, that if the rumor that he is officially MCU, they're gonna have that. Uh, that they're gonna have that that fucking graphic that AEW has, like like fucking uh, Ryan Gosling is MCU. <laughs> they should Marvel should start doing that. Right, they're not even showing the roles that they are. Just put the actor with the thing that says. 
Ryan Gosling is MCU. Get ready. Ah, that'd be fucking funny and badass. Because everybody would be like, who is he going to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be Nova. Uh, it would be a waste for him to be Doctor Doom. I'd rather have someone like Killen Murphy or... What's his name? Mads Mikkelsen. But Matt Mikkelsen was already in a Marvel movie. But he would be a good Doom. Javier Bardem. May I'm Javier Bardem. He would be a good Doctor Doom because already you don't understand what the fuck he says when he talks English. So it would be perfect because he's wearing a mask and they can just CGI the sound out of that or whatever it's called. A AI the shit out of it. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> All right, all right. It's getting too out of control with this bullshit. But we're not done. Because the final story. And I saved the best for last. <laughs> but none other than the great Grace Randolph is back at it again. As James Gunn says, as the sun comes out every day, Grace Randolph will spew her, her bullshit <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, Grace Randolph is now claiming that she has read the script for the Fantastic Four in the MCU. Fantastic Four starring uh, Pedro Pascal and uh, Vanessa Kirby and this fucking guy and that other fucking guy. I don't remember. I'm high and drunk. Um, they're famous. Everyone's famous in these movies. This little girl went on the internet, on Twitter, where the fuck, her little shit, her little fucking podcast with the skyline in New York, drinking coffee like a nerd and shit. She came out and she says, the movie is gonna remind a lot of you of Little Women. The most recent Little Women. The one who did Barbie. Little Women. Um. I've never seen this movie. And I've never seen the original or read the book. And I don't have any interest in knowing anything about Little Women. I like mature women. Let it be heard and known right now. Alright. There's no perverts on this broadcast. Anyways. Um. So I don't know nothing about this. But according to the people on the internet, what they've deciphered is that this movie, Little Women, is a movie that takes place when they're old and then shows you flashbacks of stuff when they're young and then back to something that happens and then back. And it's a movie that goes back and forth. Two timelines, when they're, when they're young and when they're old. And it's showing you two stories together. Two whatever tell a, a story in the end so basically they're saying that the mcu fucking fantastic four is going to be a movie where it's showing you two timelines it's basically going to be showing you them in modern day already as a team and then remember them having flashbacks telling sort of their origin story I guess. I don't know. She didn't give a lot away. She just basically said it's going to be like if you're watching Little Women. And that's the main thing people says about Little Women. Is, is that's a movie that goes like that back and forth. So I already knew that this movie, or at least some of the spoilers, was that this movie was going to be in its own earth. Where there's not going to be in the MCU. It's going to be on its own timeline. And it's going to be on its own fucking thing. But now that she says this. I don't know. Maybe it's changed. I'm very curious as to see what this movie is going to be like. Because Kevin Feige has says they're not going to do an origin story. That's been done and played over and over and over again. So they don't want to do that anymore. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, it's very interesting. And and it also worries me because Oppenheimer was that sort of movie where it went from 
the pretty much the ending where they're showing you the trials at the end and then it kept going back to how it started and the war and then the beginning of the projects and then it kept going back to the trial and then back and forth and it went back and forth Oppenheimer did that and I even though I I, I, I liked Oppenheimer and I recognize it for the work of art that it is and the performances and it's a good movie I didn't like that aspect of it I didn't at all and if that's what Fantastic Four is I might not enjoy it as much as I should be enjoying it. This is all I'm going to say. Because I even feel like I can go, now that I've downloaded Oppenheimer, I can go and chop that movie, in the scenes, and put it in the order that it's supposed to happen from, you know, till the end. And I think, to me, it would probably be more enjoyable. I mean, there's some stuff that wouldn't make sense because there's some visuals that interlock the time. You know, he does some visuals. That's what's cool about it. You know, he does a trippy shit. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what this ass ends up being like. Okay. We'll see. Because, uh, frankly, it could be up in the air. And Grace Randolph has not been the most reliable of sources. And even James Gunn doesn't like her. But he might actually be lying and might actually have put her in the movie as many people are claiming that she's going to be in the movie. As a reporter, some ass. In James Gunn movie, as a joke, a little side joke for all you nerds. We'll see if that happens. But either way, I think I have ranted long enough for tonight. And most of you are already gone. So we're all falling asleep and we're drunk and we're high and that's what it is all about on Friday nights after a long week of work I want to thank you all for showing up tonight and being here and I will leave you with just a tiny little bit of life advice and that life advice is to uh, Tupac Shakur's life advice is keep your head up keep your head up and stay positive no matter how bad things are getting because at the end of the day, even though you don't realize it yet, at the end of the day, it really is all in your head. And if you just stay focused and get those bad thoughts from popping in and focus and good things, you want good things, and you imagine and you see good things. And whenever that voice pops in and says, ah, oh, this is bullshit, this is no good, and fuck this, you just have to push it away. Keep your head up, stay positive, and things will slowly change. I promise you will. Happy Friday night. Cheers. Walk back. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh? <laughs>